in the name of Jesus drought in your life that even when it is physical rainy season it is still dry season spiritually financially and otherwise I decree and declare let the rain begin to fall let the rain begin to fall let the rain begin to fall you're welcome to another spirit filled message on fifty centric message if you're new to this channel I would entreat you to hit on that subscribe button and then to like this video as well I would want you to share this message across because we believe that as this message is coming forth it's going to bless you your graces are going to be imparted unto you and then God is going to visit you your way thank you for watching be blessed we have a lot of content to share with you so we would entreat you to subscribe to this channel as well as like us Hit that notification bell to receive more updates from us because we know that whatever content here is going to set you on course at every time. It's going to make you attain whatever stature that Christ wants you to attain. Thank you. When it has to do with the things of God, you must be discerning. Are we blessed? Because there are many, many others, marriages that are coming. You will hear other testimonies. Rejoice with them that rejoice. And it is true, we are humans. Let me tell you, if it is God, you too will stand here. But you're not going to get it done through desperation, Facebook, WhatsApp, connections. Um, what do we call it? All these antichrist systems. It matters how you get connected to marriage. This is something you're going to do for a lifetime and don't allow that pressure. Sisters, are we blessed? Are we listening? Especially when you leave this environment and go to other fellow sisters like you who are not godly. Chances are that they will sit down, a 30 minutes discussion will water down your whole prayer and fasting. Someone will come up and tell you a horrific story another person will tell you something else and please those of us who are parents here and those following online let me encourage us i don't believe that any godly parent should put pressure on their children to get married just as a way of massaging their ego we're spiritual people the bible says he makes all things beautiful in his own time so please you're a parent here you're a guardian let's be careful sometimes we don't pressure people directly especially for our dear sisters there are messages there are body languages that we communicate that put pressure on these people you know i counsel people and i talk to people all the time and sometimes i try to discern what is the pressure behind you know this gentleman, he can't sit down. He has become a hustler. Anything he hears that is producing money, he wants to be part of it. And the reason is because at the back of it, there's someone somewhere mounting pressure on the gentleman. At your age, I already had a house. And the guy feels guilty for being 30 and not having a house. Whereas the pathway he's taking is the pathway that will lead him to that blessing. God gives people speed, but he does not rush people. There is a difference between speed and rush. Are we together? I, I, just, I just felt like introducing this to just keep our hearts together because you see, our emotional levels are very different. There are people just for this good news you see now may not sleep for days. And that's not supposed to be an insult. It is because we live in a society that has become so emotional everything around you is speaking to your emotions this is where being spiritual comes a spiritual man is not somebody who prays in tongues a spiritual man is one who has gained stability through the understanding of who god is and the integrity of his word that's spirituality are we together now yes so it's very important we'll continue to rejoice with our people and support them but please please do not make a costly decision, especially towards the area of finance and marriage. Two important areas that no one at all who loves God. I will not know anybody I love and allow to make some of these careless decisions. By God's grace, we are here to help 
um, all our brothers sisters make the wisest decision in the different areas of our lives and where our experiences are limited we are very open to recommend you to people who we believe their wisdom is worthy of reception so please make sure that you don't make a mess of your life just because of societal pressure here and there you may be having a trouser of 20 naira have it with honor whilst you are trusting god to lift you is that true yes and um please parents have contributed and I, I say this with all respect and honor in hurting and destroying the life of young people they push us into seasons that were not directed by god there are many people crying and languishing in marriage right now there are many people whose whole lives have you know been reduced to shambles because of this mistake so it's very important remember that marriage will have children my father said something years ago that was very instructive to me he said it is parents that make mistakes children don't make mistakes so if you know that children are going to come forth from your union you should be honest enough to consider them in your decisions when you are saying yes to an ungodly man you are not only being wicked you are being selfish because children are going to come from that union and you are now submitting not just to a man you are submitting to a platform i'm not teaching on relationship tonight i'm just trying to make sure that that we are in a position where god can help us tonight are we together for me truly sometimes i get very surprised gentlemen do it but our sisters too sometimes people come to church they hear the word of the lord and you you labor do you know let me tell you this as a man of god and as a leader your greatest joy is to see people use the truths that you are teaching and their lives are changing so sometimes when i see the kind of especially marital decisions that sisters take I'm, I'm tempted to ask is it that they don't understand what we're teaching or is it that they don't attend the meetings are we together and some of you don't like me as you are looking at me like this because you have trained your mind into believing that I might be antagonistic to your agenda only an unwise person someone that has been at the focal point of your spiritual development will God now use that person to destroy you is, is that not deception already so many people run away is after they get married and go away and it backfires then you see them ringing your phone and disturbing you and saying all kinds of things just the art of humility to listen can save you I always think about the children you can do whatever you want with your life provided you have a covenant with God that you won't have children you destroy yourself and reap the consequences of your carelessness but when you are bringing a child I happen to be involved in the life of so many children and sometimes I look at them and I'm very sad because most children are paying the price for the selfish decisions some of us seated here looking at me now you have lived your life paying the price of someone's carelessness don't reproduce that same result are we together so please and please in as much as we celebrate people and all these people you see i meet with them and i talk with them i pray with them so don't just forward any wedding card when we don't know you we don't know how god helped your decision we are not irresponsible people don't just say i'm a member of koinonia usually people hide under departments like prayer band they say i'm a member of prayer band and just because they are looking for financial support no we don't do that marriage is not occult it's something to be proud of this is the wonderful lady i'm getting married to and they talk to you is proud is 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 very proud of any gentleman to believe you can outgrow guidance it's foolishness are we together is god helping us say my children will glorify god through my life say it one more time my children will glorify god 
through my life what I suffered my children will not suffer the price I paid my children will not pay it that's a good husband wife father mother hallelujah be happily married not just married be happily married be happily married being married is a choice being happily married is also another choice being uncomfortably married is also a choice the ball is in your court make a decision make a decision let your joy be preserved don't admire your single days after you get married and wish you were not married that's not a good thing especially i'm speaking for those of us who are men of god and those who are going to be called into the ministry let me tell you something there are not many things that can give a man of god joy because he's involved in pouring himself to people so the few things that are around your life that can give you joy insist that they are there prosperity can give you joy a good wife or good husband can give you joy well-behaved children can give you joy a healthy church with listening members can give you joy are we together the things that give men by the grace of god the privilege that god has given me to rise in influence and a number of others who have gone before me that we've had the opportunity to talk let me tell you greatness is a very lonely realm if no one has told you learn it the life of great people is they are busy but there are not many things they don't have a system very few systems give back to them somebody did something one day here i think i've shared it and the person said apostle i want to hug you and i did like that they said no put down your hands let me hug you and suddenly it occurred to me that in years it's me that has always been hugging even when you say let's hug i'm the one who reaches out something as little as that so if if your marriage the only chance you have to be happy you ruin it because of pressure and because of saying look this is the only guy that is available and you destroy yourself you will live an angry life when dr billy graham now of blessed memory was launching his library his wife had gone to be with the lord and he stood there they were the presidents of different different um you know tenures together of the united states they were all there to cheer him up and he got up and you you thought he would talk about the whole library thing and he just made one statement he said as i'm standing here i miss my wife so terribly i said wow that's an evangelist there are many people who cannot say that forget these lies people do in the public many people are not happy they are not happy and they had a chance to be happy they rejected it but as many as received him meaning you can reject him praise god i'm talking about something else but is it all right if we take two minutes to just pray for our families our lives is that okay please pray just you can sit down just pray truly speaking pray I believe in family I am an advocate of family there is no responsible man of God no responsible man of God who wants to raise believers whose families are in shambles what prayer are you praying when your family is in shambles pray pray don't look at me some of you are looking around this is a serious business pray please Lord rescue me from this 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 siege of darkness this programming of lucifer that he wants to use to destroy the destiny of a generation pray lord i speak your married pray for your home pray for your own family too lord there will be no repetition the pain i saw growing up will not repeat itself i disallow it from being featured in my own life pray don't say I'm not in a relationship yet. Don't say I'm not married yet. Or don't say I'm already married. It's too late. 
Pray, I insist to be responsible. I insist to provide for my family. Hallelujah. Please be seated. I think if, if this is all we do tonight, it was worth it. Somebody may be asking, Apostle, what do I do while I wait for my miracle? Behave well. Behave well. It's amazing how many people will miss the will of God because of bad behavior, not demons. I'm saying this especially with a bias to our sisters. Am I boring you? Is it all right if I just encourage us? Behave well. There is an expected behavior that opens you up. Many people don't behave well. And we learned this from our society. We don't behave well. We are rude, dishonor everybody. We have been taught this, this demonic thing that we call class is a spirit that is eating up the destinies of people. Most ladies call commitment and seriousness being cheap. The moment you are required to put your heart in what you are doing, they say, no, I can't be that cheap. The society has sold a lie to us and we destroy our homes. Most brothers, especially some of us that God has given a little influence, this our pride is what will never allow us move forward. We think we are big men. We want everything to happen in life at our own terms. No, sir. No, sir. Marriage is not by force, but if you must engage in it, please think of these children. Please think of these children. Forget about yourself. You can ruin your life and find something else to do. But don't bring any child on earth. We already have enough children on earth. Who are wasting away don't add to it behave yourself well behave yourself well what do i do while i'm waiting brother be serious be responsible about your life is that true be responsible coordinate your life together where am i going don't carry somebody's daughter and an ad in your life and frustrate the poor girl's life in the name of marriage now ladies should not marry men just because of a brighter future i've said it that's investment however however a brother cannot carry a lady that is not going anywhere and keep wasting her time you see many of our dear women all around suffering in the hands of visionless men it's not that they forgot where they are going. They never knew where they were going from the beginning. That's why we counsel people. That's why we talk to people. That's why many people are not happy. Because they think that when you counsel them, especially where you have to tell them, no, this thing mm -mm, is not working out. They get angry because in their minds, you are an enemy of progress. Not knowing that that's you delivering them from decades of pain. There are some mistakes that even if corrected, can you can never have it the way it was again. Are we together? There are things it is best to get right once and for all. Thank you, Jesus. Let's get to the word. Koinonia is quiet. Were you blessed? that's the work of a good shepherd to talk to you and love you too much to have. you'll be surprised that this little word now that i said is somebody's deliverance someone was about to make an unwise decision and jesus just came jesus the way showed you the way out of every nonsense please destroy any relationship that is going nowhere and you, you can know that this relationship is not going anywhere. Get out of it immediately. A man that is beating you before marriage, there is nothing to pray about. Let him leave. If there is a problem, we have miracle service. We finish seven days prayer and fasting. If he loved God enough, he should be here. Is that true? Hmm. You see the signs everywhere. There are few people who get into wrong marriages not knowing. It's a lie. There are signs everywhere. Ejimi says, love 
is blind but marriage will open your eyes most people most people god showed them the signs but they refused say no 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 oh god i'm you know that i'm not young i'm not a fool don't think this person talking to you doesn't know what he's saying oh apostle age is not on my side i want to have my children fast are you the first to have children children are a heritage from the lord one isaac one isaac one isaac there are people with 12 children they died fast because of those children do you want a child or you want a blessing blessed be the name of the lord okay tonight we are going to talk along the lines of spiritual growth i i thought through a few things during the week and i like documenting my contemplations and that's going to be the basis of our discussion tonight quite a number of things tonight is a very serious discussion and um i have been concerned and, and i must i must admit to you that it's once in a while the holy spirit just brings it as a burden i have been concerned about the body of christ generally i think about the body of christ i've been concerned about our growth as a body not just as a ministry but as a body i thank god for the wonderful things that we record as a corporate body the church but i think that one of the greatest challenges in my opinion with the body of christ is not demons it's not fake men of god it's not all of those things it's not exaggerations it's lack of growth you can know that a church is growing by seeing certain exact things happen you can know that a believer is growing our indices that we have created to measure growth needs to be balanced and guided otherwise we may fall prey of satan's deception are we together it is the will of god that every church must grow it is the will of god that every believer must grow but then we must examine our growth very carefully second timothy chapter 3 second timothy chapter 3 we'll read 16 and 17 second timothy chapter 3 read the first two words just first two words ready one two read one more time one more time one more time it says all scripture this is the first error that i think the devil is bringing to the body of christ we are gradually edging out the richness of the word in an attempt to try to create some kind of balance or create to to further our perspectives really that's the expression we have started throwing away scriptures the bible says all scripture old testament new testament genesis exodus leviticus revelations the gospels the epistles the torah the poetic books all scripture is given by what the inspiration of god and is profitable everybody say all scripture is profitable say again all scripture is profitable genesis is profitable exodus is profitable leviticus is profitable deuteronomy numbers profitable revelations profitable we we've had all kinds of theology coming out right now that try to push some parts of the world to mean that they are not relevant in our context today in an attempt and i'm not just talking of um what we call the grace movement alone not at all there are many people who have come up with a system did you know that even certain recent versions of the bible now are being so edited that certain uh, uh, volumes of of chapters and books have not edited taken away completely all scripture is given 
by the inspiration of God and is profitable. Number one, for doctrine. Number two, for what? Reproof. Three, correction. Four, instruction in righteousness. Next verse, please. 17. That the man of God may be mature, perfect, mature, complete, thoroughly furnished. That means if I exempt myself from the experience of certain truths as contained in this old scripture, I may be furnished but not thoroughly furnished. And there is a dimension of God that I may never experience. Are we together now? All scripture. I don't take the Bible and then stratify it and say I'm just for the gospels. I'm just for the Pauline epistles. I'm just for eschatology, the study of end times. I'm just for the Torah. I'm just for this. I'm just for wisdom, the poetic books. I'm just for the prophetic books. The Bible says all scripture, all without reservation. Are we together? So let, let's be very careful. Now, I, I respect the body of Christ by God's grace, by position uh, as far as my love for the body is concerned, I think that I've already communicated it in the clearest form possible. That you know I love the body of Christ. I have extreme honor for the body. But we must be careful. I think we're making a serious mistake. And it's going to destroy us. If we neglect the truth of scripture, just because it does not sound comfortable as far our, as our perspectives about God is concerned, all scripture... All scripture growth is something that we all long for we desire growth in any and every aspect of our lives when we talk of growth we talk of increase growth talks of increase increase in size increase in capacity increase in platforms increase in access all of these things are measures of growth increase in resources but then the, the dimension of growth that I want us to focus on is growth as increase in the comprehension of truth comprehension of truth not just acquisition of things growth as seen by our comprehension of the truth you look at the body of christ and there are many things that happen around the body that are statements. Statements that communicate to us that although there's action, although there's a lot of motion, although there is a display of gifts, the gifts of the spirit, but there really isn't growth. And I'm concerned because if we are not growing, then it means something will happen to us one day that will sabotage God's intention and desire for us. Are we together? I was watching TV, I don't know when, when was it? And a very nice program. And then the next thing, I think the worship team there were singing and they just raised a song and I couldn't believe it. I'm not talking of a secular song. I'm talking of a senseless song spiritually senseless do you know the kinds of songs now i'm just trying to let's reason together C can i continue is, is that all right look at the kinds of songs that we sing in church especially songs that we sing for praise worship sessions it's clear that both the members and the singers don't think about what they are singing is that true is it matters don't say it does not matter we sing songs that are not consistent with God's character of operation. Now, there are certain aspects of the faith here and there that we may disagree, but foundationally, there are truths that should be kicked out by every and all persons out of the body of Christ. Those informations are not for Christians. They are captured in our songs. Everyone just writes a song and we are so concerned about the melodies. We continue to sing all kinds of nonsense and rubbish. We rehearse those songs. We score those songs and nobody has the spiritual understanding to say something is wrong. Do you not know that singing is prophecy too? You are speaking to the destinies of people. How about teaching the word? Listen. 
most of us men of God think just because you read your Bible and you have intelligence to understand what it says, it means you can teach. Teaching is a gift. Oh. Teaching is a gift. There is the gift. That, that office, there is the office of a teacher. But God can give you that access to understanding. So, the body of Christ is full of knowledgeable people. Knowledgeable people. Theologians. And men and women of God who are vocally sound. We have oratory. We have good speech command. And because of that, we believe that the moment you are a good communicator, you can stand and just pick one scripture, pick another, and put them together and begin to communicate thoughts. Look how misled and deceived the average church member is. Not necessarily because the man of God is bad, but his perspectives. Do you know that is is when you stand before people to teach, you are shaping their understanding based on a viewpoint you are giving them. And it matters, you will be judged before God if you cause people to see life from a perspective that is erroneous. So scripture says not everyone should presume to be teachers. That you are quoting scripture does not mean you understand it. That your teaching looks complex does not mean you understand it. Hmm. Men of God have dappled into subjects in the Christian faith that they have not had unique illumination from the Spirit. And we have carved out opinions and arrogantly touched those opinions and misled members. So there is no growth. You hear it in our songs. You see how believers behave outside of church walls no character no good behavior anger everywhere now that person you see is a chief usher that person you see when it's time to lay hands that individual comes can even be the pastor himself or the pastor's wife something is wrong are we blessed is god helping us god desires that we grow i think one of the most deceptive scenarios that make us think that we are growing is the display of gifts everybody say the display of gifts spiritual gifts nothing is more deceptive than rating the spiritual growth of an individual a ministry an assembly just based on the flamboyancy of the gift now don't get me wrong if you are growing it must tell in your dispensing the power of god however using gifts as a platform for growth is a big error very big error let me tell you the truth when i pray for koinonia i, I am telling you the truth i'm not praying for the power of god to move i'm not praying that i'll be able to prophesy and speak to people no i'm praying that the communications the words of my mouth, the meditations of my heart will be as revealed by the Spirit. You can wake me from bed and I can get up and go to a world conference. And that meeting, there will be such dimension of a move of God, you will think I've been fasting for one year. And so you will be deceived that just because you saw the power of God moving in unusual dimension, this guy must be deep in the Spirit. It's a lie. It's a lie. Are you getting what I'm saying now? Say gifts. The gift of the spirit is never an accurate measure of a man's spiritual growth. So there is a problem in the body of Christ. Gifts are charismatic. Gifts are flamboyant. When you are gifted, you will have a lot of money because that's value itself. People will come to you. People will sow into your life. You see that? You know, one time, I think we were in, um, was it three years or so ago, we were in Kano. I was ministering at a PFN, a, a PFN conference. And, you know, the power of God, wonderful things were happening. There was such a dramatic move of the spirit. And all of a sudden, here comes this woman, this old mama. She just came out. I called out by prophecy and I saw something about this woman. This woman reads her Bible. She finishes the whole Bible 
like every two, two or three, three weeks. She's an intercessor. Now, can you imagine that this woman came out in honor that I called her and I would be foolish to imagine we're at the same spiritual level. When that woman stood before me, I saw a woman that knew God. Forget that she was not called into ministry. Nobody is inviting her. The woman would have been, to her it was an honor that Joshua Selman would lay his hands on her. If I had my way, I would just kneel down and hold her leg and say, please, whatever God did to you, may he do to me. But simply because I'm the one wearing suit, Apostle Joshua Selman, and everybody is seated, you will see that, and because the mama does not look very intelligent, doesn't have all the PhDs and all of that, brothers and sisters that is depth that is a dimension of relationship are we together but just because I'm standing someone is shouting outside someone we're not trivializing these things but sometimes we ourselves can be deceived if I ask you who is the most spiritual person in koinonia now you will point to me it's a lie oh. it's a lie there was a woman called Anna the prophetess in the Bible. No crusade, no leading prayer. Even in the temple, they didn't give her any prayer point. But she was quietly seated, praying for the consolation of Israel. She prayed Jesus to appear. Let me tell you, some of the deeply spiritual people are not even in ministry. You don't know them. They are not on TV. They don't have any name you see one old woman who wakes up four o'clock every year for 37 years i don't think i have that kind of discipline 4 a.m even if she sleeps by two by four she will wake up there are women who get up and go and pray in one small local village church they are they, they own the key of the church prayer time is five o'clock but they wake up by four they are in the village praying having the encounters that we brag around that's their atmosphere of living and yet just because they cannot operate facebook and they cannot make noise we are here bragging around with our names all over google and people think that we are the ones who are spiritual we must be careful what we call growth otherwise we would deceive ourselves and deceive others is God speaking to us tonight? I have seen people and I have met people. Some of them have even come for counseling. When I stood before them, the depth of presence they carried. I'm not talking of anointing. No. Goodness. You look at them and you yourself, after the counseling and prayer, you, you go back and say, God, Abba, God, am I not available again? I have seen them I have seen people I have seen people who this vision thing we talk about they didn't even know that's the name of what they were having before people started experiencing angels you talk to them they will say it casually oh is it that angel he comes to me I'm 69 years he started coming when I was 21 just because they've not written a book and nobody knows them The church must be careful just because you have prosperity just because you have a crowd of people outside just because you can teach the Word of God just because you have some measure of excellence those things are wonderful but they are wrong indices just because you can teach the word just because you can call someone by word of knowledge just because you can prophesy just because you can speak i can stand right now and tell you that somebody will shout outside not that god told me me joshua selman somebody will shout you see somebody jumping out and shouting and just because i said it and it happened you will now look and say ah this guy only god knows what must be going nothing is happening this is gift gift we equate faith with money so if i come and you look at what i'm wearing if you think it is nice you just say kai this guy must have faith is that true is that really true you don't like what i'm sharing this night we have to be careful 
the indices we have put together to measure spiritual growth is destroying the body of Christ. So there are people who will leave God. God, go places. Just give me a can, give me a suit, and you wear it. And people say, my God, the word of God, you are changing in one month. <laughs> a car, a house, miracle alert. Some of us believe that just because this alert entered your phone is a sign that your growth is tremendous. It's not. This is why those who don't experience those things go back and they want to give away the health of their status with God to get those things. The voice of the Holy Spirit is seldom heard in the body. Do you know you can walk in the gift of prophecy and yet not hear God? <laughs> Spirit break out Break our walls down Spirit break out Heaven come down So I pray a lot tonight Spirit break out Shedani ne na 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 Break our walls down Spirit break out Heaven come down Wrong parameters very wrong parameters there are people who were doing well but they left what they were doing because they want to embrace other parameters as defined by the body to show you are spiritual they had a healthy prayer life they had very healthy dimensions then just because one or two areas were not there they feel intimidated when they stand if i tell you stratify men of god now according to anointing and power you say joshua selman you stand in front then one brother who is just a prayer warrior with his 200 naira trousers and palms you say stand behind you two are you can't you compare you will be lying you will be surprised that in the realm of the spirit i would not even see that guy not even close to him who taught us this we were wrongly mentored to use wrong parameters so those of us who God has helped to be highly gifted and anointed, we have, we have created an impression in the body that just because the gift of the Spirit flows powerful in your life, automatically, it means you know God. No. Didn't the bones of Elisha raise a dead body? I'm sharing with you my contemplations. That there's something wrong with the body. Am I against prosperity? No, never will. Am I against lifting? Am I against influence? No. But we're making a big mistake. Sometimes, you know, and I thank God for the privilege he has given me to inspire a lot of people. I, I, I consider myself to be an inspiration to many people in this nation and around the world. And I thank God for that privilege. I travel for meetings. And every time, as soon as I come out of the car, there's a row of young people overflow. I see the admiration. I see everything. And everybody's watching. They're watching what I'm wearing. They're watching. They're hoping, will I fall when he passes me? And I just keep nodding my head. I'm saying these people really do not know who God is. When you know God, ba, it will take grace for you to want to go out of his presence even for ministry. When you know God, it will take the grace of God for him to tell you, look, son, I know you are, but you go out and do some other things. That's why we are not changing. Ever learning, but we are not changing. You look at people, they've been members of a church for 20 years. No change at all. They pray. They fast. They do a lot of these things, but the truth is there is no transformation whatsoever. Spiritual growth is not determined by how long you have been a Christian. Listen to me. 
let me clear certain things longevity in the christian faith is not equivalent to growth no sir just because you are you gave your life to christ in 1997 and you are celebrating your 11th birthday as we say in the faith does not mean that you have suddenly become matured we we pride ourselves in all of the way i remember when i was a baby christian in in 199 because just because you gave your life to christ in year 2000 and now it's 2018 you imagine that a, an eight-year-old uh, baby would have been grown now and then you now imagine that you too you would have grown no sir our churches are full of people who pride themselves they say look all these things you people are doing we gave our life to christ in 1964 and i say that with all honor what happened from 1964 till today you have been the same person in fact you have gone backward more than 20 years backward a man can give his life to christ and in one year with hunger and passion and fire attain more in one year than someone will attain in 30 years it's true overtaking is allowed in the spirit your growth is subject to your passion your hunger and many other things that i'll be showing you but just get the record straight brothers and sisters and those following online that longevity in the christian faith does not automatically translate to growth truth be told if you were doing business with god and you have stayed long there is a lot you have to teach people but just that you have stayed long on its own that you remember the day you came out for an altar call as 20 years ago that does not mean you are matured a lot of baby christians keep saying when i was a baby christian whereas you can see the parameter spiritual growth is not determined by church attendance that you have been attending koinonia for many years that you have been attending church for many years that you attend service four or five times a week as important and profitable as that is that does not translate to spiritual growth there are many church addicts who believe that just because they are addicted to church program doing one thing or the other oh i'm a deacon i'm a deaconess i'm responsible for baptizing people i'm responsible for school of ministry i'm responsible for marriage counseling i'm responsible for building they have activities that commit them around the church for many years and they think because of those activities they are matured so when you say look i remember when we started the building project remember 1991 they nod to mean that oh that time when we were children they, whereas they are still children by god's standard say amen spiritual growth is not determined by church attendance let me surprise you spiritual growth is not even determined just by the religious study of bible I describe it that way so that you don't think I'm against Bible study. There is a religious study of the Bible where men just, there are many theological experts who have read the Bible. The nature of their vocation, the nature of their work necessitates that they must read the Bible thoroughly and research, but they don't know God. Some of the people who translated this Bible did not know God. It is part of the reason why they did a lot of things to this Bible. I'm, I'm, it's not something to discuss now. Are we together? Just because you are around a Bible study group, just because you have been given an opportunity to be preached, to, 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 to be preaching around or doing all of these things does not mean you are growing spiritually. hallelujah is god speaking to us not determined by any of those things spiritual growth is not even determined by the amount of testimonies you receive 
all of a sudden if i get a testimony sunday monday tuesday wednesday thursday friday saturday chances are that i can deceive myself that because i had seven days stretch it means i've entered a new dimension with god no sir no sir can just be that you are enjoying prophecy someone just spoke over your life and things are happening but that may not be because there are people who say if i am really growing why am i not getting a particular testimony or this testimony or that testimony and those who get the testimonies now intimidate others say well you see you are not getting anything no sir spiritual growth is not measured by ministerial growth it's not necessarily so ministry can be growing but you are not growing members are multiplying but you are not growing branches are multiplying but you are not growing sermons are multiplying but you are not growing books multiplying but you are not growing the level of excellence in the ministry multiplying but you are not growing none of those things in themselves they are only supportive reasons for spiritual growth but not the basis for the measure of spiritual growth Is God helping us? That's the reason why someone can raise a song and, and raise a, a song that does not carry any value spiritually. And the next thing you see, people just dancing and sweating and jumping and you are wondering, I'm not teaching you to be cynical. You see, God is a merciful God. And I taught you the character of love, that love judges intentions more than actions. So God can see an ignorant people just dancing around for something that doesn't make sense, like idolatry. And he looks at the sincerity of their heart and still reaches them. But that does not justify what they are doing. Are we together? I'm going to share with you certain indices that will help you know whether you are growing spiritually and will help you know whether the body is growing spiritually. Thank you. Do you know... I live a very busy schedule most of you know that and honestly let me tell you this sometimes I look at my schedules and I wish for the times when nobody knew me I, I thank God it's always a privilege to reach out to people and bless people but sometimes I'm on my way going for a trip and I'm tired I'm going for administration and I'm just there wondering my God here we go again lord i do this because i love you but i sit down and i admire those days that i can stroll out in the open and nobody knows me i can go in peace now i hardly can even walk in the day someone can see you and embarrass and say apostle i've been trying to see you the, the queue was long now that i've seen you please just speak a word as if you are not a human being now that looks like fame because i'm giving you a word of caution because this is what some of you are dying to get there is a side effect to greatness Listen to what I'm telling you. You literally will lose your life. If you are not careful, you will lose your mind. That's why great people, you can see that they do a lot of things. One day you see a great person go and commit suicide. And you are wondering, how could someone so wealthy and influential hang himself? You almost don't have a life at all. We call it a celebrity lifestyle. As I just said, some of you are happy. You are just saying, oh God, give it to me. Be careful. Before you pray that prayer, please listen to me with your ears and your spirit. This thing we call celebrity lifestyle, it has a serious side effect to your Christian life. Am I rejecting influence? No. No, I will always balance what I'm teaching. But be careful. I look forward to the times when I can go and smuggle myself and hide somewhere. Do you know for me to have time to pray, there must be a special arrangement. You must shift the phone away. You must off television. You must off light. You must find something to charge your atmosphere. I jokingly tell my boys, sometimes when I'm going to select the clothes that I, I want to wear, I just stand and I look at my clothes and I say, you see, this is how we sin against God. When I didn't have anything, I just go and in five minutes you've picked something out. But now that God has blessed you, which of the hundred shoes will I wear? Which of the fifty suits will I wear? They look little, but they are eaters 
of the quality of your life not just spiritually but in every wise they can rob you of the richness the value of life and living listen to what i'm telling you it's true it's true if you came to my house now and you saw me eating roasted yam you'll be surprised now as if i don't have a right to do it this is my own life but simply because of the position i occupy ah, ah, apostle roasted yam no it can't be you see that let me tell you this let me tell you this not many people will admit this and tell you this is how people die spiritually because your whole life becomes plastic everything there is there is no realness between you and god again everything Are we together you can't lie down and roll before God again no matter what happens to your growth preserve the things that help you know God preserve them don't lose them while you grow don't lose the secret place while you grow don't lose the altar of prayer while you grow if God grants you grace to build a house, build an altar for you and God. Don't build a garage for your car and leave God outside. We must re-examine these truths as far as spiritual growth is concerned. Because believers, listen to me, it is important that we grow. Can I call you? Can I say, come Sheung, let's assume that Sheung just gave his life to Christ now. Please look up everyone. Let's assume Sheung just gave his life to Christ tonight. And I attach him to Dr. Emeka. I say, Emeka, please follow up on this person. Question, does this gentleman really know what to do? Most people don't know in church. They don't know what next. They just say, well... In our church, we, we, have, we have discipleship class or we have foundation class or we have baptismal class or whatever. They just recommend you. When you say follow him, say, well, I have one small prayer group. Come and join. That's, that's all I know. Do you know, believers, we are so basic in our understanding. That's the reason why there is a lot of increase in membership but no maturity. We are not matured enough. You can't give what you don't have. The average Christian does not know how to make another Christian mature. Even preachers. Even preachers. You see people hang around your life for a long time. They are not growing. I've had the privilege of going around men of God who are influential and I've been surprised seeing the people close to them. No, no transformation at all. Yet a heavily anointed man. One day Benihim got angry and fired all the bodyguards. He said they are all godless and they are not serious. They are just collecting salary. Benihim is sweating and raising people from wheelchair and those guys are just there. They are concerned about the six pack and everything. He said get out of this place. Till today he does it. When he's preaching and sees people start saying leave my presence. He gives him memory of godless people hanging around him and not growing. That you are close to God does not mean that you are in line with him you can be close to the things around God close to church when they make altar call you are the one who directs people you are the one who does everything and you can think because you are around the things of God I will give you four indices that will measure thank you guys that are measures of your spiritual growth you will know tonight whether you are growing you will know whether your church is growing you will know whether your family is growing spiritually ready number one the first parameter to measure spiritual growth as given by God is your love life your love life write it down your love life first John chapter 4 a long reading 7 to 21 first John chapter 4 from verse 7 to 21 the first parameter to measure your growth in the kingdom 
is your love life. Everybody say my love life. I don't mean love like love. You know what I'm talking about. Love. God and men. Let's read what the Bible says. Beloved, let us love one another. For God is love and everyone that loveth is what? Born of God. And knoweth God. Don't tell me you know God if I cannot see it in your love life. There are many people, we are still reading, there are many people who claim they love God, but there is no love in their life. They don't love God and they don't love people. The more, the deeper and the higher you rise in God, the more it translates to your love for people. The Bible says, He that loveth not, knoweth not God. For God is what? So don't tell me you know God just because you are speaking Greek and Hebrew and Latin and Aramaic. No, I look at your love life. You may not have all the charismatism around ministry, but I want to see your love life. Continue please, nine. In this was manifested the love of God towards us because that God sent his only begotten son into the world that we might live through him. It's a long reading. Let's see how far we go. Hearing is love. Not that we loved God, but that he loved us. He's giving you the character of the kind of love he's talking about now. And sent his son to be a propitiation for our sin. Beloved, if God so loved us, please read on with me we ought also to do what look at the kind of hatred Ejimi, that is in the body of christ among believers i'm not talking of non-christians you look palpable hatred palpable resentment yet we keep writing books we keep saying we keep saying we love we preachers hate ourselves we have trained the members to hate themselves and everybody hates everybody a family of five people they hate themselves. Twelve. No man had seen God at any time. If we love one another, God dwelleth in us. That means I use love to show whether God is around your environment. If you claim you came out of his presence, if you claim you dwell in his presence, and I do not see love, the Bible is saying you are lying. Because that God cannot appear, so I will use love. Like you spray a perfume, and some of you who are very strong perfumes, when you pass, the perfumes can, it can show that you were around this vicinity, or you are around, that's it. God says that love is like the aura that flows the epitome of his presence is love, not power. Love, not power. The Bible never said if you see power, just know God is there. It says that no man had seen God at any time. If we love one another, then God dwelleth in us. And his love is perfected. Perfected. Full. Hereby know we that we dwell in him. And he in us because he had given us of his spirit. We are reading to 21. It's a long reading. And we have seen and do testify that the father sent the son to be the savior of the world. 15. Whosoever shall confess that Jesus is son of God and all of that. Next verse. It says, and we have known and believed the love that God had sent to us. God is love. It says it again. And he that dwelleth in love dwell in God and God in him. So Joshua Selman, you claim you are spiritually matured. Don't just show me by the miracles. Don't just show me by the wheelchairs and crutches alone. In the order of priority, let me see your love life. Not your prayer life. Your love life. Many tongue talkers don't have any love. In that praying in tongues, there is even flesh in it. very powerful song i'm coming back to that song hearing is our love made perfect that we may have the boldness in the day of judgment because as he is so away in this world 18 we're reading to 21 there is no fear in love ah look at this there is no fear it's not saying reverence fear fear 
but perfect love casted out fear because fear has what if my life torments you you are, and you are not a demon spirit something is wrong with me because my life should encourage you should challenge you but not torment you there are people whose lives are a torment to others there are pastors whose lives are a torment to others there's no love there perfect love cast out fear because fear keeps people in a place of torment there are people in church who cannot do wrong things and come to a man of God and say look I'm so sorry I was in your house the other day and you noticed the bomb beater went halfway let me just tell you the truth it was me because they already know say you okay I'm coming let me just finish my prayer just wait for me and the guy prays for hours you are hearing him he comes out sweating and says sit down what did you even say and starts talking as though he was acting he was acting there because fear hath torment he says we love him because he first loved us two more verses if a man say Joshua Selman if a ministry says if a Christian organization say I love God and what talk to me he did his brother he said he is a did I say it all scripture was inspired all scripture that if Joshua Selman claims I come here and brag around and say the power of God is moving and I do not love a Jimmy I do not love Pastor Alpha the Bible says I am a liar and it tells you the reason why you are a liar so be patient he's explaining for he that loveth not his brother whom he has seen he says how can he love God whom he had not seen You have somebody that claims you are of the same family and you hate the person then you turn to god and say lord i love you you are my lord you are my rose of sharon lily of the valley john says you are a liar while praying liar while fasting dry liar while praying in tongues liar while on that crusade ground liar And this commandment have we from him that he who loveth God loveth have you ever been told that it's a command it's not just a choice to love is a command the level and the extent of hatred that is in church is scary from we pastors men of God leaders we train people to hate people let me show you growth we can look at koinonia today and know our level of spiritual growth as a ministry not just by the power that flows our love life our love life everybody say my love life I see your growth by how much you love people I see your growth by how much you care about people. You just hear that, ah, somebody lost something. It's good for him. He doesn't listen. No, 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 no. You are here. Okay, what happened? How can we help? Love. I'm deep in love with you, Lord. Very powerful song. I'm deep in love with you. Abba, Father. I'm deep in love with you, Lord. That's my confession tonight. That I'm deep in love with you, precious Jesus. I'm deep in love with you, Lord. Listen, let me tell you this. One of the reasons why many people cannot flow in the anointing is because there is no love love is like a cleaner that cleans the valve where the power of God flows there are people who the power of God can barely flow in their life they pray like fire but their hatred has clogged the passage for the power of God to flow in one of my greatest desire is even the meaning of my name the way to love I pray all the time that God will keep my love life for people not just him I can lie and pretend that I love him but let it be shown by how I love people who is smiling because you are alive 
not just love i love you is not the show of love is one of the ways he said how many of you will see a brother listen carefully james was teaching us faith and works you are seeing somebody crying hungry and say oh i bid you god speed he said no believers are not caring this is where the orthodox assemblies i doff my heart a thousand times for them Pentecostal people because we believe in life when a member loses a child everybody just goes we don't want to be associated with that pain we are life givers hallelujah is that true and we leave the people to cry and we leave the people to go through all kinds of pain but when there is celebration oh glory to God we are happy everybody comes around this is my son this is my daughter this CEO this businessman who was promoted I remember the night vigil when I prophesied to him because we like being associated with things that massage our ego Jesus wept at funerals he was not too busy he was touched with the feelings of people's infirmity when he saw the woman who had five husbands and the six was not her own I know what Joshua Selma would have done madam and you have not come for koinonia what a stupid lawless woman but watch Jesus the Jesus we are trying to become I, I we must make sure is this Jesus we are trying to become Jesus goes to sit at a well and begins to converse is she so important I mean Jesus you would miss crusades to talk with this supposed woman he that dwells in love dwells in God we have given Satan room to perpetuate hatred among us I'll not be surprised if there are people seated here in this place tonight that don't even see eyeball to eyeball. They just hear the sound of one another. Good evening, hey, how are you? And everybody just goes. No. Spiritual growth. I'm deep in love with you. Abba Father. I'm deep in love with you, Lord. We're deep in love with you, precious Jesus. We're deep in love with you, Lord. Hallelujah. The first, your love life, the way you love people. There is nothing more beautiful than seeing a human being who has value for life. That's why all these wicked dictators are going to hell if they don't repent, I guarantee you. They don't need any vision of anybody saying, I saw them in hell. That's where they are going to. If, if your life dehumanizes another human being, you are going to hell. I'm telling you this. Men are God's highest creation. Your life should never intentionally, listen to me, your life should never intentionally be the basis for the destruction of another. No. No. There are some of us, we claim we love God. We claim we are prayer warriors. We claim we are war giants. We are ministers, Apostle Joshua Selman. But people can never rise because of us. Someone comes to see you and goes back heartbroken and torn into pieces. Why are we like? Just because the person did not achieve a task well. Are you this stupid? You mean it? You are doing it? You don't know who is talking to you. And then we feel say, sorry, brother, bless you. How are you? Ha -ha. Somebody just annoyed me. Nee. You, are, you, are such an, you are such an idiot. You are a stupid person. Huh? Okay, bless you, bless you. Who, who, who are you lying to? Don't laugh. Oh, I'm serious this night. Look at some of our parents. On the way to church on the way to church who are the stupid people inside this car they didn't watch this car and they're on their way going that's the man of god he's going to conduct the service as soon as he drives um where is my bible <gasps> he's talking to his wife now i forgot honey i thought you were car don't honey me you are a stupid woman i always knew i made a mistake after 17 years you are still as stupid as you are and then somebody just knocked and say ah man of god can i ah bless you bless you brother no the bible said let that man know that he's a liar let that let that anointed man know he's a liar even with the anointing he's still a liar 
love must be genuine that doesn't mean people are not human beings don't just see anybody just pressing on you for something naughty and wrong you did and just say you see what apostle is saying no. there are lousy people that deserve deserve to be addressed in a way and manner is still love yes still love love doesn't just I'm, I'm saying this especially for we young people because we we like being allowed to do anything we want to do whether it's good or bad no he that loves you will chastise you chastise you can you say your love life is worthy of emulation can you say whilst you are seated listening to me whilst you're outside those following online can you say your love life as you're seated right now is worthy of emulation do you seek the good in everybody there are people who are is their whole life is is like it's like they rejoice over the pain of others when they see somebody laughing they say well why, why are you laughing what is the laugh for well i'm just i'm just just the glory of god so what is there to laugh am i looking like a clown how can your life be so sad like that love love i love people i love the workers in this ministry i love you with all my heart every one of you ask god he will tell you yes yes let me see your love by how much you lay down your life for your sheep let me see your love by how much you can sacrifice not how much you use people do you know there are times people sow seeds for me here and i look at the people sowing the seed and i look at the kind of seed they are sowing i feel so guilty so guilty i'm fighting with myself some of you as soon as that seed is coming say hey, why did you put it in an envelope how much is it okay seven is it nine or seven thousand say it's nine thousand sir say thank you father bless the person then you know that the, the person's need is not even your concern just to receive i really love people with all my heart it's one of the secrets of my work with god i don't just love god i love people and i'm careful to use that word because it's true you must love people as a father do you love your wife do you love your children are you compassionate many of us don't have compassion this thing called compassion the ability to be touched with the feelings of people's infirmity weakness limitation say me i'm not an emotional person no it's not about crying you must not cry to show you are i'm not i'm not an emotional person in terms of cry but anybody the more you know god the the fortitude to forbear with people to understand with people must be there I remember one time someone just knocked my gate bang 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 and then i came i opened the door and i saw a woman standing wearing hijab and you know she was just asking for this i want I, I i actually was sad because of the way she was knocking you know and then i looked and and i just saw tears that's it i just said no 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 what is what is wrong now and i brought out some money just put something and gave her and she went away you know sometimes children will just gather themselves like this and come and knock the gate and stand as if as if I ask them to come now when I see those children truly speaking I know what they are doing is wrong but how will you start beating the, you see the way the hunger ravaged faces I have to just find something and give them because if I give them money I know they'll go and collect it so you give them something they can eat there and then do you have compassion some of us I don't mean to insult you I'm sorry if I do but you are wicked yes you are wicked it's not it's not it's not an insult it's a description it's a state of your heart you can watch people in pain and act as if it's, it's not my concern no you can see hungry people and come with one thousand naira change it buy food there eat the bones take minerals squeeze the leather throw it and say okay, i'm going for corridor now see we'll see now no you are not tender-hearted your heart is hard like iron the bible speaks about those people that he will replace a heart of stone say a heart of stone say it say it a heart of stone with a heart of flesh a heart of stone some of us our hearts are like stone someone calls you and says look something is not working well in my life 
and just leave. So how is that my business? Sorry, sir. They just threw me out of my house. I, I, I just felt like sharing it with somebody. Even if you don't have house rent to give them, can't you pray with them? Please, let's be careful the way we treat people. It is a proof of spiritual growth. Love. Love. Sometimes I'm tired in the night, very tired. I just try to stroll. I'm strolling and I'm just seeing a missed call. I can check sometimes 32 missed calls, one line. And I just pick the call. Hello, who are you? And you hear the person saying something silly. Is this Apostle Joshua Selman? He said, Man of God, I'm, I'm privileged. You are calling me by two. What's the issue? Sir, I have many things. I don't even know where I will start from. This guy, 32 missed calls. You would think someone is sick in the hospital. But that guy just got up, sleep, didn't come. You see, so um, I, 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 I agree that men can be annoying. Let's, let's be very honest here. Men can be very annoying, except you are not a leader. Human beings, they can be annoying with their ingratitude. They can be annoying with their sarcasm. They can be anno annoying with their, 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 their sense of cynicism and disrespect and dishonor. Yet the Bible says that you love. Everybody say, I choose to love. Say it again, I choose to love. Say, I choose to love. I want you to stand up, walk around to 10 people and just hug them and tell them, I choose to love you. For the sake of Jesus Christ. Some of you, it's not for the sake of your bad behavior. For the sake of Jesus Christ. I choose to love. I let go. I choose to love. I choose to love. I choose to love. It's a decision that I've made. No matter how annoying you are, I choose to love. No matter how inconsiderate you act, I choose to love. It's a choice. I choose to love hallelujah God bless you please be seated God bless you please be seated let's settle down the second index to measure your growth is the manifestation of character character galatians chapter 5 let's look at the fruit of the spirit many of us don't have it you have the holy spirit but you don't have the fruit of the spirit galatians chapter 5 22 galatians 5 22 but it doesn't matter what what perspective you look at it from we're looking at all nine of them the fruit of the spirit is love Look at me now. This thing we call the fruit of the spirit is the summation of what we call character. Character has nothing to do with personality. I'm quiet. I'm loud. Mm -mm. If the fruit, the fruit of the spirit describes the habitation, the atmosphere that produces character, love, joy, joy. Brothers and sisters, joy is not happiness. If you don't have joy, you don't have character. Every time we talk of character, many of us just look and excuse ourselves in pride. I'm not smoking. I'm not looking for any man's wife. So you think because of that you have character. No, sir. Joy. 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 Rejoice in the Lord. And let me tell you, I know your joy when you are under pressure. Pressure is where joy is demonstrated if you are spiritual. You just had that your phone that you bought 120,000 somebody just stepped on it and you are saying I'm going to kill this person I think well sorry we are human beings don't you make mistakes you too you are annoyed but joy everybody say joy joy you are there is that state of merriment in your heart for no reason they just tell you look um your mother's is um, health issue is getting complicated and you just say in the name of Jesus I'm happy joy, joy joy is in my heart 
some of the saddest people in the world are believers that claim they have the Holy Spirit watch them as they drive around the road watch them as they talk there's no joy you see unbelievers sometimes they even hear bad news and they just laugh it over and go and take beer and maybe smoke or go around and that's the end of it they sleep under the bridge by morning they get up and that's it but a believer joyless life and you find out that you can't receive anything the bible says he that sows in tears he will reap in joy it didn't say he will reap with joy he will reap in joy the atmosphere that will bring his receiving harvest is joy if there is no joy the harvest does not arrive you sow in tears not with tears but you reap in joy joy is what calls harvests I know your spiritual life by how you rejoice even in the midst of pain you go to the board three carryovers God you disappointed me give me back the 10,000 that I sold in Koinonia I gave project 10,000 I tied all of this the joy of the Lord is here. that's what you see you come and you see your car They've removed something. You kept the car in the market to quickly go and buy something. And all these touts remove all kinds of things. They've removed one part of the light. It can be annoying. And you stand there. And the devil is trying to tempt you. And you, no. Satan, you will not see my tears. I choose to rejoice. A brother just walks up to you and says, look, I'm just announcing to you although we have done the traditionals something came up i will marry you again now don't lie that you'll be laughing so let's be human there's going to be pain but but this is where spirituality comes in listen this is where spirituality comes in you know that a man can receive nothing except it is given so lord i give you thanks and you just begin to say lord i thank you I give you all the praise I give you all the thanks and tears coming out of your eyes you don't hide it say Lord I thank you I thank you <laughs> ah brothers and sisters I show you a mature Christian as one who produces joy in his life regardless of circumstances regardless regardless if I'm here right now and they tell me my house is burning let me tell you the truth I won't be happy but to say maybe I won't be able to sleep this night me Joshua Selman no 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 way ah, Lord I give you praise thank you thank you that this house burnt and I did not die inside I give you thanks it would have been worse it is the mind that brought everything is still alive so I'm alive I've not really lost anything John peace in this troubled world some of us don't have peace it's not just the word shalom are we together this peace you see is a revelation of the ability of God to be in control control my God is in control I need not fear what can man do to me I need not fear a great man in this country was kidnapped by assassins when they caught him they were about to kill him and they said look this and they looked at him he was restful very very restful and they looked at him they didn't know what to do with him he wasn't begging well okay 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 go to the back of my wardrobe that's where the money is if it's the dollars check the other side mm -hmm. the guy was there restfulness we live in a troubled world you must have peace to survive most people don't have peace that's what causes high blood pressure there's no peace so they worry they worry about everything who will marry me i hope i will have a child though i hope i will have a house lord where will i settle will i be in zaria or this you are about to write jam yet you are asking god lord when i finish university who will be my wife what kind of worry is that he makes me lie down in quiet waters I receive grace to walk in peace. You must receive it. 
grace to walk in peace. You are full of the peace of God. People just come and say, look, hey, the whole world is getting, I mean, the sun is going to hit the moon. One object, we don't know, one UFO will soon hit the earth next week. I'm in peace, great peace. Have them that trust him. In nothing shall they be terrified. Great peace. Great peace. Everybody say, I have peace. Say it, I have peace. Say, I refuse to worry. Prophesy to yourself, I refuse to worry. This, this is the measure of maturity. This is where the, our orthodox circles beat us, supposed Pentecostal people, hands down. You will see a woman who had a car accident, four of her children right there on the floor. One no head, one no hand. And you see her singing a song. Crying, but singing a song. You try to stop her, say, no, you people should not cry. My children are in heaven. This is the person who should be crying, comforting you. Great peace. Our emotional world that does not trust God, we are perturbed at everything. I will give you a job tomorrow. Hey, hey, hey Lord, I thank you. I call you by 1 a.m. Something came up. That job is not, oh God, why are you doing this to me now? Stability, restfulness. My God is alive. Hmm. Is God teaching us something tonight? long suffering another word there is patience in our world of fast food quick tea fast uh, uh, what they call it indomie ready made food there are other foods that just drop it put water and up you go we are in a rush we don't have patience it's led people into all kinds of things we are impatient do you know there are people, if only they were patient for one more day, they would see the salvation of the Lord in their lives. You've been traveling just when your miracle is about to come. Impatience cheats you. Do you know, let me tell you how to know your miracle is coming. The flesh begins to become so uncomfortable. It starts offering alternatives. The moment this starts, you were praying non-stop for two weeks. Just three more days, it looks like you are praying for one year. It's a sign that result is coming. The devil is trying to touch whatever he can touch. So you don't have the staying power to remain and receive that. I choose to be patient. There are men of God who is impatient that drove them to go and collect power from sorcerers. The power is not working now. They have not experienced increase. Impatience. Some of our parents are in huge debt today because impatience did not allow. There are young people today. Just be patient for one year and you'll know I must marry by latest by June. They go and borrow 1.2 million at, at a 30% interest rate per month. And they don't think well. They just go and borrow it. And Satan, Satan, you will use that money or health, not even the marriage. That's Satan for you. impatience has cheated our world of young people someone sent me a text i should pray that he must go to is this cyprus or where that he believes in the word of god upon my mouth that his mother is the one sponsoring him i replied him back i said young man your mother cannot afford your fees why must you go to cyprus he's already studying in nigeria he wants to leave it not that something is wrong this supposed let it be that me too i read abroad that gentleman now will allow the devil use him to yoke his poor mother to send him to Cyprus or send him wherever it is that he was going. I didn't pray for him. Gentleness. Gentleness. The character that typifies this is the dove. Many of us were not gentle we miss out on everything because we don't have gentleness many of us are introverted so we think we are gentle you are not don't confuse your personality with the fruit of the spirit this is the fruit of the recreated human spirit in touch with the holy ghost that you are a quiet person there are people who they just look depressed it doesn't mean they are gentle they can be wicked and wild it's just that they are slow to doing it. Doesn't mean they won't do it. Gentleness. The way you eat, 
the way you act you knock on someone's door you are not you are not you are, your presence is not inviting you are, your approach to life is harsh very wild goodness goodness benevolence goodness not just kindness goodness a measure of your giving not just money the ease at which you release things to improve people's lives goodness not just giving faith or faithfulness let's go to the next one 23 meekness meekness is, is, is similar to humility meekness esteeming people better than yourself or at least not degrading people to rise temperance self-control 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 knowing when to speak and when to keep quiet knowing when to keep quiet even when you have what to say the bible says if a man err not in words that man is a perfect man perfection is not measured just by what you do but the ability to keep quiet do you know the level of spiritual maturity it takes to be silent when you have something to say a man is counseling you and is making blunders he's quoting wrong scriptures and you are very sound in the world yet you keep quiet oh yes daddy oh yes ah yes daddy and the man is quoting one scripture that doesn't make sense and saying something that is, is a total waste of time honestly but you have the fortitude yes daddy at the end of it he releases a blessing every other thing was false except that blessing that one you can be sure you got it but someone ah, daddy sorry just to correct you <laughs> that verse is is, is 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 old testament ah daddy you are getting old your memory and you you talk and you you are saying something that is so pungent and offensive and you say it's, it's how i am i'm very expressive character let me give you a few other scriptures we may not consider them for time's sake very quickly write this down romans chapter 5 from verse 3 to 5 let's look at that one at least romans 5 3 to 5 then i'll give you two others second peter chapter 1 verse 5 to 7 please write it down second peter chapter 1 verse 5 to 7 and then colossians chapter 3 from verse 12 to 15 colossians chapter 3 from verse 12 to 15. let's look at romans chapter 3 chapter 5 from verse 3 it says and not only so but we glory in tribulations knowing that tribulations worketh patience and patience experience and experience hope five and hope make it not ashamed because the love of god is shed abroad in our hearts by the holy ghost he was talking about people sustaining the same power in times of tribulation can you go through difficult times and still give god the glory do you sustain the fortitude to not curse god like job's wife suggested he do and job said no 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 though he slay me yet will i trust him say amen number three the third index for measuring growth for a believer for a church for an assembly is god blessing you tonight is understanding 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 your love life character understanding hebrews chapter 5 please give us from verse 11 to 13 quickly hebrews chapter 5 from verse 11 to 13 it says of whom we have many things to say and hard to be uttered seeing ye are dull of hearing go ahead for when for the time ye ought to be teachers ye have need that one teach you again which be the first principles of the oracles of god and are become such as have need of milk and not strong meat this this guy is saying by now based on my investment in your life you should have attained a level where you should be teachers but you are still there struggling with the foundational things of the kingdom barren of understanding he says for everyone that uses milk is unskillful unskillful in the word of righteousness for he is a babe no matter how long he has been in church 
no matter how old he is in age. First Corinthians chapter 4 and verse 20. First Corinthians chapter 4 and verse 20. Then we look at chapter 13 verse 11. Quickly please. First Corinthians chapter 14. I meant to say 14. 14 and verse 20. First Corinthians 14 and verse 20. Let's read together. It's projected. One to read. Brethren, be not children in understanding. How be it? In malice, be ye children, but in understanding, be men. Hmm. This is Apostle Paul for you. This guy was really a man. He said when it comes to malice and all these other foolish things and nonsense, be children. Be children. But when it comes to the issues of understanding the kingdom, be men, be matured, grow. There's too much childishness in the body of Christ. There are truths in the kingdom we must know. Your identity in Christ is the foundation for your growth. Who are you in Christ? This is not just a denomination's perspective. It is the order of growth. Because if you do not know who you are and who you are in Christ, like the book of Ephesians opens us up to, every other thing will not work well. I know my positional advantage in Christ, my oneness with him, that understanding is enshrined in my mind forever. Regardless of what I do, I do from the standpoint of that understanding. And then other ordinances of the spirit. The Bible talks of the doctrines of baptisms. The Bible talks of other things, foundational things that must be in place. The ministry of prayer. At a level in the spirit, you should not be taught the basics of prayer. Again, that if somebody is oppressed, they say, have you prayed? Say, no. Say, pray now. I say, okay. Didn't you know? After how many years in church, must you be told to tithe? All this coercing that pastors coerce people. No. Time for the word. You have to coerce people. God has something to say. You are, you are getting the attention. Listen, listen. And then the, the song is really working for them because they would not have listened. What sort of a membership is that? Are we together? You should have grown to the level where you have seen the value of the word of God. Do you know I'm surprised when I see people gisting and talking around when the word is coming. It's satanic. It's an attack. Because when the word comes, it is sent. The preacher may be preaching it, but God is sending it. The one thing Satan supervises himself is the word. The bad soil. Immediately Satan, not a demon, he came and took the seed by himself. Everybody say understanding. First Corinthians chapter 13 and verse 11. Paul again is teaching us. You are not growing spiritually when your understanding is not measuring up with your supposed growth. It says when I was a child, I speak as a child. So I can know you are a child through your communication. I understood as a child. You can look at one of these our little ones and promise them aeroplane. And first thing in the morning, they come to you with confidence, believing you actually will get them aeroplane. That's, that's how many of us understand spiritual things. The devil will tell us every kind of nonsense and we still believe it. Although you know he can't do it and you still believe it. That's, that's understanding as a child. I thought as a child, but when I became a man, I put away including childish understanding. What is your understanding like? What do you know about God today? There are some things the devil will never try to bring to my life with all humility. I have gained understanding more than that. There is no message on earth that will make me stop tithing. There is, no, 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 no. It's a persuasion. This is not a denomination's perspective I adopted. It's a revelation that has become spirit and life. Hmm. You see that? There is, there is no amount of revelation that will make my tomorrow less than my today. No, I've caught the keys. It's been given to me. Hmm. Koinonia will never, never go down. Let me tell you. It's, it's not pride. There is an understanding that sponsors that position. What do you understand today that gives you stability? 
if I get a text now and someone says apostle just to let you know that tomorrow by this time you're a dead man what do I know that gives me confidence <laughs> I went to minister somewhere we're going to pray shortly I went to minister somewhere and a man who God gave them a miracle of a child there was a herbalist did you mean the herbalist made I don't know I can't get the full import of the story but there was some incantation and the herbalist vowed that nobody can break that whatever jinx and the rest and all of a sudden I was I was in that church and I prophesied to them that they were going to have their child now when I went back to me now and they, they showed me the child the child was there and the herbalist was dead i didn't kill the herbalist a mystery killed him a proud man who was taught by another ignorant man concocts a charm and claims there is no man remember people have made those kinds of stupid statements in the bible shall these things be that even if god will open the windows of heaven ah god said me you bring me into the equation and act as if I'm, I'm one of your, your rulers. You will see it, but you will eat of it. They stamped that guy to death at the gate of where the breakthrough was. Our stability in the kingdom is through our understanding. I can give everything I have today and go to bed in peace. Because I know how it came. I know how it comes. I know how it will always come. We can go and start koinonia anywhere that God grants us grace and this same result you see will be reproduced verbatim. It's based on understanding. It's not luck. What do you understand about God? What do you understand about finances? What do you understand about marriage? What do you understand about the voice of God? What do you understand about the anointing? What do you understand about redemption? Don't just tell me I know. Mm -mm. It matters. Who trained your understanding? There's something that you have been taught that makes Satan such a big deal to you that your entire life revolves around just being careful and awareness of his presence. There are things I understood about Satan that gave me rest in my life. It is true. You can't be doing what I'm doing if all you have is anointing. The devil will destroy you. He will destroy you, I assure you. Hallelujah. If I'm sitting outside taking a fresh air and my eyes is open and I see a demon spirit pass, I'm not going to say anything. He didn't talk to me. Just, just go wherever you are. Toe and fro. Up you go. I pity the spirit for seeing me because he won't be the same. I don't have to pray. You see that? Already that mission is failed, for sure, at least for that day, at least in my presence. Now, the light shines in darkness. It didn't say it shines in the night. It shines in darkness. Darkness is not a state, it's a person. The light shines in darkness, the prince of darkness. You cannot see the light and act like you didn't see it. No. I can never pray for you and your life remains the same. It's not true. Either the devil will attack you from that prayer or breakthrough will come. You will never be the same. That prayer will do something. It may increase the attack in your life because the devil is agitated that you came. Or it can bring breakthrough or something. Just know that you will not be the same. It's impossible. I believe this. I have been saying this thing for many years. If I were lying about it, you would see it by now. Brothers and sisters, I have been raised up with Christ. Truly, I believe this. It is not Kenneth Hagin's ideology. It is not E.W. Kenyon's ideology. It is the truth from Scripture. Far above. Bishop Oyedeko will call it a far above mentality. I really am above. Above occultic powers. Only God knows how many of them have my names now. They will call on my name like Baal from morning till night till every year and nothing will happen what do you believe about god what do you believe about yourself i believe i will never be poor it's not the issue of okay i like money or i don't like money i can't undo it the process has been ignited it can never be undone understanding i will have to undo everything i know it's too late this i believe 
koinonia will never go down no it's not the issue of let's pray that it was let me tell you the truth brothers and sisters i don't mean to be arrogant believe me there is a finger holding this ministry it's not standing upon space there is a hand hmm. he upholds all things by the word of his power the right hand of god able to hold men and keep them standing when all is said and done to him be the glory standing what do you understand about your job what do you understand about favor what do you understand about prayer is god helping us these are the things that make us spiritual when i'm invited for a meeting what do i understand about myself about god about the anointing that will bless the people if you invite me for a meeting what do what do i understand do i know that i am a blessing if you know you are a blessing you are not going to meet any church member and tell him look i'm prophesying to you so twenty thousand naira to my life anybody that does that is not a wise man of god it's because you do not understand god let him that glorieth glory in this that he understandeth and knoweth me i can't claim i know everything about this god but brothers and sisters there are some things i know the more you know God the more you know yourself the only way to know yourself is in knowing him because you are a reflection of him here's what the Bible has to say the Bible says in 2nd Corinthians chapter 3 and verse 18 2nd Corinthians 3 and verse 18 it says but we all with open face listen beholding us in a glass not beholding ourselves beholding the glory then we are changed like the animals of Jacob and Laban kept looking at something and the children they gave birth to were after the order of what they were looking at. The Bible says, as we behold him, all I see in my life is the glory of God. All I see in my life is the glory of God. Truly speaking, this is not just some nonsense confession. All I see in my life, I am an expression of the glory of God. All I see in my life, I have made my eyes single like a flint to see the glory of God. I see his faithfulness whatever does not work out the way I want God is up to something Lord I see your glory I see the glory of God in koinonia don't allow Satan alter your perception and see the world as negative and see everything I see the whole world is coming to end the whole world will not end by a crisis God will end the world he started it's not all this nonsense that people move around and say one one thing is coming to hit the earth it's not today before you were born it's been going around the earth there is the keeper of the earth the earth is the Lord's. The landlord can lock his door and say it's over this time. Everybody say understanding. Number four. The last index to measure your spiritual growth is the outworkings of the power of God in and through your life. The outworkings listen it has to be in this order your love life character 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 understanding gain understanding understand the systems of the kingdom don't is it's a risk to just walk around like that and then finally the outworkings of god don't tell me you are growing and then your body cannot become a host for the glory and the power and the grace of god the Bible says to grow in grace and to also grow in the knowledge of God. I must be growing in the anointing. You should be able to look at my life and know that last year, this was the dimension in the spirit, dimension in power and anointing and authority. Today, this is the dimension. I have seen people who have not backslidden, but they've not grown either. They have pegged themselves at a level. The grace for performance is not in their lives. Talkatives, talking all kinds of things. The semblance of power but there's nothing to demonstrate the reality of the kingdom he said the kingdom of God is not in meat and drink but in righteousness and peace and joy in the Holy Ghost and then he says for the kingdom of God is not in words but in power the demonstration of power I should be able to see the power of God working in your life that a sister should be able to say look um, 
I've been in Koinonia two years. What's the challenge? Let's agree. Father, in the name of Jesus, we release your power over this situation. And two days later, this gentleman calls and says, Sister, I don't know you, but my goodness, you are powerful. You said something. You made an utterance. And the realm of the spirit responded. Let me tell you, when the realm of the spirit hears you, you are powerful. It's true. You are powerful. Many powerless believers. Prayer is not just power automatically. Prayer connects you to God. It is God that gives power. Prayer does not give power. People move around deceiving themselves that just because they are praying, power is coming automatically. No, sir. A prayerless -less Christian is a powerless Christian because a prayerless Christian has no contact with God. And so there is no um, release of power. It is not prayer that gives power. Prayer is like a rope. It connects you and God. It is you. God is the giver of power. Many people keep depending on prayer to give power. That's why they pray forever and never get power. There is no place in scripture where prayer should give you power. It is your connection with God. Prayer connects you to God. The same way faith too. Faith in itself does not give you result. The assignment of faith is to connect you to the anointing. It is the anointing that is the system of performance in the kingdom. Because we don't know these things, we keep confusing the things around. I believe in the power of God. My life is built on it. I'm unapologetic about the power of God. When I talk of power, I'm not talking of falling down. When I'm talking of power, I'm talking of results. Results that can be reproduced. That I can bless you. I can program a climate of possibility upon your life. There is an agency in the spirit that grants men access to do that. Do you have it in your life? I know you have been falling down every week, but do you have it? Can you say the power of God is working in your life? We need power in this life, not just for warfare. A validation of the hand of God upon your life. There are men of God who are powerless. They just say, I'm not calling to all these things. I'm a slow, quiet person. It's a lie. There's no gift of, there's no ministry like that. It's a lie. Everybody is called to be a demonstrator of the reality of God. Let me see the power in your life. There is the power to get wealth. Where is it? If wealth is not in your hands, then the power is not there or it's not being used. There is the power that brings influence. There is the power that compels demons and principalities to be subject. There is the power that heals the sick. You don't heal the sick by desire. It takes power to heal them. Virtue, virtue went out of Jesus. Not the apostles, not the disciples. Changes are created by the presence of the power and the anointing of the spirit. You are a blessing when you are powerful. You are a blessing when you are anointed. Believers, hear me. If we truly grow in the spirit, we should be powerful. But look that blend of love and power. On that, that reminds me of the lion and the lamb dimension. The lion is powerful, courageous with an attitude. And then the lamb, sacrificial, full of love. You can't just be powerful alone and not have love now love should come above power character should come above power understanding should come above power if you have power without understanding it will not last and it will be misused it is understanding that coordinates the delivery the dispensing of power so that it will be it will be dispensed in accordance to god's principles i can have the gift of visions and not have understanding of the word and I can abuse that gift and destroy people. Power, no understanding. As we pray tonight, I want to ask you a very serious question. Are these parameters working in your life? Can we honestly say as a family of believers that this is our experience? Can we say that our love life for one another and for men is ever increasing? Can we say we are growing in character as a corporate body? Are we kind? Are we loving? Can we forbear? Have we learned to tame our words? Have we learned to minister life to people? 
or are we still priding ourselves with Greek and Hebrew words moving around and saying oh I gave a revelation somewhere I gave a Hebrew word oh it's Mimshak it's, it's Exousia it's Anakazo it's this and, and we move and, and nod around thinking we are growing we make a fool out of ourselves though I speak with tongues of men and of angels and I have not love he says I am nothing that even though I offer my body to be burned though I have understanding of all mysteries and I have not love I have nothing I want to live my life and live my days having these four things in ever increasing measure in my life that 10 years from now you will be able to look at me and say this guy loves God and loves people more not that this guy has built several ministries he's become a global voice uh -uh. and Enoch walked with God and he was not not that he built churches not an Enoch wore suit he was a suit of one million and Enoch walked with God and then character 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 the manifestation of the fruit of the spirit that somebody can insult you and say pastor alpha just to let you know you are the most stupid man of God I've met and you can read the text and say well it's just his opinion the Lord bless you and not be under pressure to reply him back and say I curse you now Jesus for you ah, what manner of man Jesus inspires me he truly is a mentor he's not just he's not just a father he's not just God when Jesus mentors your life, your life becomes a wonder. You will sit in the middle of all kinds of things and just watch life like this. Apostle, I'm suspecting you're a herbalist. That's all right. This is your, it's your opinion. Where did you get your power from? I've been suspecting you. No problem. You can suspect. That's, that's all right. A life of peace. Character. You can see somebody that offended you come pastor and he comes to meet you and like Esau and Jacob you are the first to hug him ah. and you can stand and say I love you with all my heart how is your ministry doing how is everything doing not that you see somebody going down and say <laughs> he insulted me the other day you will know that this 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 head has some of those things we watch people do be careful it's not proof of maturity. It's proof of foolishness. It's a sign that there is no growth. For God so loved the world, you must also love men. The more you become like him, the more you love men. I love people. You don't know how happy I am after the grace when our little children all run here and come and jump on me. Some of you are trying to clean my suit. What is the suit? Let them jump. They are teaching me something. The day these children become afraid of you, you should go for a retreat. Because it's a sign that there is a presence you are carrying that is pungent. They don't have the kind of understanding that should ordinarily create fear. Something about your countenance, which is a product of something in your head, is translating to the fear of those kids. This is how to live a useful life. Next time you say you are growing spiritually, don't say it because they are inviting you for meetings. No. Don't say it just because you bought a new car wonderful as it is you must take it in this order when you go back home now for you and for your loved ones take that test on a scale of one to ten what is my love life it's easy to lie that you love god but my neighbor my friends my people my roommate my nasty unbelieving roommate My fellow person in the department here as a worker, do I love to see the good in others or do I rejoice when I destroy others? When I'm tearing other people down, do I derive fulfillment from it? Then you must go to God. And then character. Can I say I'm a man of character? Can I say I'm a woman of character? Can I say I'm a man of character? Anointing takes you up, character keeps you there. There are people who don't have character. That's why they went, they will go to a man's church and tear down the people. Look for all the wealthy people seated in front in the church and organize a special meeting and ask them for money and ask them for whatever it is. Prophecy and you give money. No character. 
is because a man of God does not have character that you go and bring another pastor to come and raise money for him and you are manipulating people and they are giving their all not willingly you will know they will not be blessed and the man is there when they finish they will now share it and pray over the money and lie that let it be used for the advancement of your kingdom number three understanding and number four the outworkings of the power of God if this is working in your life these four things and in ever increasing measure then please give yourself rest you are growing it doesn't matter which prophet comes to meet you and say Jimmy I saw something two weeks ago you are not growing please tear that paper and throw it away and say thank you Jesus I'm growing in love I'm growing in character because you have to be careful there are all kinds of people who will come to you day and night manipulating your understanding about spiritual things do you know how many visions and dreams I've gotten in my life all kinds of things there was a time I was sawing in the spirit so powerfully and then came this five or six useless page text message by whoever I can't remember I think we're organizing all kinds of things I said I should be careful what I am teaching something about what I'm teaching I don't delete it I said go away please it's when you don't know God that I'm not saying you should be cynical there are times that God can use people to caution you but not that people just carry their ignorance crying for relevance and come and confuse your consistency with God and you go back feeling bad you are loving God someone just says I have a dream oh and in that dream I saw you you were standing like a madman by the roadside and you are believing that nonsense I reject it madman doing what by which roadside I am hidden in Christ and Christ in God it may not be so for all of us but that's what I believe sometimes you may be the one who even had that dream yourself and you got up and say me naked in my secondary school I'm wearing pajamas shirt no trouser and I'm sitting in my secondary school it's a revelation of an attack in your life so what do you do as a believer enforce your victory don't complain don't send the text to head of department prayer uh, Jimmy and do you know it's amazing how people they, the same thing they tell you they tell him they tell every man of God just anybody they know and they say at least I know that up to 10 people are praying for me then they go to bed laziness you get up and say in the name of Jesus the spirit that wants to cause delay you saw yourself in an old building your former house Satan you are a liar the Bible says the part of the just not I want to move forward that's not prayer it is written that's the basis of your prayer the spirit that keeps me down I take authority over you I am risen with Christ I decree and declare that no weapon fashion against me shall prosper I have been called out of every tribe and tongue this is the believer walking your salvation with fear and trembling there is no level you get to that you stop doing this thing I'm saying you are too big to do it you will be too big to rise are we together now people send me text messages apostle I saw you having a plane crash I just see that in the name of Jesus not me no way uh -huh. The plane was made of metals. The metals were in the earth. I was given dominion over the earth. It didn't say I'm giving dominion when I'm walking on land. I was given dominion. I don't just say I will arrive safely. That's not enough for me. I need to know the basis of arriving safely. Except that plane was made of smoke. If it was made of metals and I am above it, he that cometh from above is above all. If it will crash, I will not enter it. But if I enter it, is God that is in charge of that plane. It's not a generic belief. It's mine. It's my understanding. I don't believe there is any mortal man born of a woman on earth that can kill me. I don't believe I will eat poison and die. I don't believe it. It's only in heaven that will tell how many times I've eaten it. I won't die, oh, no. No. I will not pray for people carrying communicable diseases and after 10 years they now check my system and find and find out that while I was praying for one the thing entered me I better go back and flog it out with God and pray on a handkerchief and say everybody come and touch it but if God tells me lay hands I must find out there has to be something in my life A 
if Satan talks to me, I'll talk back to him. If I hear God, I should be able to hear Satan. I'm not afraid of hearing a voice. If Satan talks to me, I know he's the one. Oh, Satan, this is you. It is written. I shall not fail. It is written. I and the children that the Lord has given me, we are for signs and for wonders. It is written. I don't, hey, Satan, how did you get to my room? That's a foolish question. Satan came to Jesus. In terms of oppression, let them go. But in terms of uh, maybe Satan coming, let me tell you, it is possible that the higher you are growing, one day you will see him. Satan, real, not a demon. If you see him, nothing should scare you. He is Satan. There is a gulf between two of you, light and darkness. Just that your eyes see you close does not mean that's all there is. Mm -mm. Mm -mm. He shall keep his angels charge over you. They shall bear thee up on their wings, lest thou dash your feet against the stone. That's what the Bible says, that for as the mountains surround Jerusalem, right? So God has surrounded us. That's how I live my life. Are you ready to pray tonight? Can you say you are growing spiritually? For some of you, no. For some of you, no. And we are going to pray. Some of you are even leading groups prayer groups but you are not growing spiritually some of you are pastoring churches but you are not growing spiritually some of you are leaders of christian organizations you are not growing spiritually rise up on your feet and let's pray some of you have every man of god's message you listen to five messages per day and you convince yourself that just because you are listening to it you are growing no sir no sir lift your voice and thank the lord for what you have just heard tonight growth growth thank him lord we are here to grow we are here to grow tonight you have given us understanding tonight you have opened up the truth of your word to us we want to be matured believers not just church goers not just koinonia followers not just pentecostals not just christians we want to grow grounded and rooted in the truth make sure you are praying lift your voice and pray lord we want to get our priorities right based on the revelation of the truth that you have revealed to us we do not want to live our lives in flattery deceiving ourselves comparing ourselves with ourselves Getting the accolades of men and not growing by your standard. Hallelujah. We are going to pray four quick prayer points. Number one, Lord, let the love of God in me and let the love of God express towards my fellow men. Let it grow in ever increasing measure in my life. Lift your voice and pray. The spirit of hatred, a wicked and a bitter spirit, the spirit that rejoices over the downfall of others. The spirit that makes me a naysayer. The spirit that makes me a sadist. I rejoice when people go down. I rejoice when things are not working well in their lives. I come against that, against that spirit. I declare that my love life is intact. Lift your voice and pray. I'm not only a lover of your presence. I'm not only a lover of your word. I'm a lover of your people. I love men. I love men. They are your highest creation. I love men. I love the brethren. I love the people of God. I love my fellow brothers and sisters. I will never be part of the destruction of anyone called by the name of the Lord. Pray. I love every ministry. I love every church. I love every Christian organization. I love and honor every man of God. I love with all my heart. The love of God is richly, richly at work in me in ever increasing measure. Hatred cannot be part of my life. Malice cannot be part of my life. A divisive spirit can never be part of my life. My love is communicated through words. My love is communicated in sacrifice, communicated in giving. Hallelujah.
Number two, you're going to cry and say, Lord, make me a man of character, a woman of character. Leave understanding, leave anointing will come in there. But cry and say, Lord, edit my life. Give me stability. Let me not destroy my opportunities because of lack of character. Lift your voice and pray. Character. And if a man err not in words, that man is a perfect man. Teach me how to talk. Let the fruit of the Spirit take away the attributes of the flesh. Let the fruit of the Spirit be richly at work in me. Let me not sit down and conceive wickedness in my heart. Character. 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 Hallelujah. Number three. You're going to say, Lord, open my understanding and increase my comprehension of the truth. Lift your voice and pray. Lord, I don't want to be attending Koinonia week in, week out. Attending church every Sunday, every Wednesday, every Tuesday, every Thursday, every Friday. Attending departmental meetings. Yet I'm not growing. Lord, open my understanding. Let me have an exact comprehension of truth. The truth that brings me to a point of victory. Lord, give me the truth that works. That will lift me up. That will make me mighty. Exousia. Dominion. Authority. On the strength of truth. Pray. Stability in my life. Grant unto me truth. Open my eyes. Take away fear from my life. Let truth give me stability. Let truth give me prosperity. Let truth give me influence. Let truth keep me away from fear. The fear of death. The fear of oppression. I cry for understanding. Illumination. Light. Understanding. Passion for the word. Passion for the word. Open down my eyes that I may behold one lost things. Teach me something about Satan that gives me victory. Lord, teach me something about yourself. Holy Spirit, you are the spirit of revelation. I receive of your ministry. Hallelujah. The last prayer point. Lord, make me powerful. Listen, you have to pray this prayer. I'm tired of a powerless Christian life. No anointing, no result. Your words are empty. You touch somebody's head, no blessing. Nothing about your life is what attracting people. No. No. You cook food and people eat it. No anointing. You bless people. You call someone. Somebody sows into your life and never receives any harvest. Lord, bring genuine power to my life. Lift your voice and pray. Lord, we receive power. We contend for real, authentic spiritual power. Power. Power that produces undeniable results. Power to heal the sick. Power to cleanse the lepers. In the name of Jesus. Power to speak into the lives of men. Power to change their situations. Power to enforce growth. Power to enforce prosperity. Power to save the lost. That we become demonstrators of the reality of the life of Jesus. Pray. Send power to my family. Send genuine power to my church. Not just falling down and standing up. Authentic power that produces results authentic power where your words become like the word of God where your communications are greatly desired because your speakings bring life to men
Hallelujah. Can I add just one more prayer? Lord, bring the power to prosper in my life. The power to prosper is not just about money. It's the grace that makes things work. It's called the power to prosper. The pa if all you get from the power to prosper is money, you have shortchanged that power. The power to prosper is the power of performance. There is a grace that makes things work. Lift your voice and cry. Lord, bring this power to my life. The power to prosper. The power to prosper. Hey. The power to prosper. The power to prosper. The power to prosper. Shake it like a tosata balata. The power to prosper. The power to prosper. Ever increasing prosperity. Everything working. The lines falling for me in pleasant places. Having a goodly heritage. The power to prosper. Always working for my good. The power to prosper. It is true that Jesus is coming back and my goodness there are all kinds of doctrinal and theological and archaeological arguments as to it believers must be able to find comfort why because in a congregation like this sincerely speaking even though it is not our intention as time progresses people will lost will lose loved ones is that true people will have to mourn loved ones either because their time is up or for some reason and there must be a doctrinal foundation that gives them strength at that point it takes more than an impulsive comfort for two three days people must derive sustainable strength on a revelation of what happens after this life it is on the strength of that you can now say like paul for for me to live is christ and to die is gain so if you declare long life is not out of fear it's because you need time to make kingdom come happen but if at all the flight comes you go with joy knowing that you have cheated death already is god helping us these are the doctrinal truths these are like spiritual classes schools of the spirit that you have to pass through you cannot go through these things and still be weak and be tossed to and fro the bible says it is for this that the bible says ephesians chapter 4 when you read from verse 10 to this end the bible says he gave unto some apostles and prophets evangelists pastors teachers for the maturing the equipping of the saints that the saints now being matured will do the work of the ministry to the end that will attain that stature in the spirit it says not toast to and fro by every wind of doctrine and the slight of men wherein they lie to deceive stability comes through doctrine then we will not also neglect matters of life like the economic system of the kingdom look at me did you know that the kingdom of God has an economic system that must be studied there are different systems all across this cosmos but God has his economic system that means there is a kingdom provision for the welfare of the saints it is irresponsible and I submit to you with all due respect it is irresponsible for a man of God to have the privilege of being with a congregation for many years and not expose them to the economic system of the kingdom because these are matters of life it's not just about prayer and trusting God to come. There are school fees to be paid. There are real issues that pertain unto life. And if believers are not taught, they will have to adopt any option that is available. And most of the options, you will have to trade your soul in exchange. So he said, what shall it profit a man if you will gain? These are business languages. Gain the world and lose your soul. It says, I wish above all things that you prosper and be in health. There is an economic system designed for the kingdom. And I will respectfully observe that the challenge with the body of Christ is that most times our doctrines are 
inaccurately communicated that means it's it is garnished with a plethora of imbalances so on one hand we have people who teach believers for instance that all it takes to prosper is just to focus on the spiritual laws of tithing and giving and sowing and that is wonderful there is a place for that and then they ignore the fact that there are principles of value and productivity that synergize themselves together to make believers exceptional so believers continue to obey the spiritual laws the spiritual laws are responsible for the arrival of the blessings but the natural laws are they arrive they are responsible for the sustenance if you do not know this you will keep having short-lived testimonies one breakthrough and then after five years another one comes the economic system of the kingdom then of course we have to teach believers on things that relate to relationships family life we are relational beings the command be fruitful is a very serious command be fruitful there does not just mean have children be fruitful means be relational because everything multiplies through relationships your business your job your work with God and until we understand principles of relationship prophecy will keep bringing opportunities that lack of knowledge of relationships will keep canceling out of believers lives there are many people who receive prophetic words may god connect you to destiny help us may god lift you they say amen but not understanding the requisite principles for maintaining and attracting relationships they will be spiritual pray in tongues but if you do not have this as a pastor, as a man of God, you will never have sustainable membership. Because the membership affects people before your members. And there are, there, there are principles, not only spiritual principles, psychological principles that must be in place. Let me tell you, human beings are not stupid. They will not indefinitely be loyal to someone and a cause without an interplay of these truths. If you are with me, say amen. Probably God is revealing to someone right now. This is just an introduction. Whilst you've heard me speak, God is telling you, you see the area you have ignored. The area of loophole, the area of, of ignorance, the area of carelessness in your life becomes the access point of Satan. Now, we celebrated wonderful testimonies here from people who miraculously, within a week, Look, the wonder-working power of God. Now, the anointing has played its own course. It's left for them to understand the principles of relationship now to sustain that breakthrough. Is that true? So, receiving a prophetic word is not enough. You have to be equipped with truths like the law of honor to understand these principles. So, when you say a believer is matured, you don't just mean he has been around spiritual things for a long time no it means that he has actively been mentored believers must submit themselves to mentorship not the idea of mentorship we have in our world today that has become an evil and a destructive usurping of the right and the will of men I'm talking of mentorship a system where you submit yourself to a body of spiritual truth to the end that you'll be edified and be matured this is the assignment of doctrine are we blessed to see you high and lifted up you are shining in the light of your glory pour out your power and love as we sing holy Here's the prayer. Open the eyes of my heart, Lord. It's a real prayer. Open the eyes of my heart. I want to see you. I want to see you. Hallelujah. Two men were with the resurrected Christ on the way to Emmaus just because they were at proximity with the word did not mean that they had an encounter you can be close to spiritual things for many years and convince yourself that just because you are around spiritual things you are growing 
they were with Jesus and yet did not recognize him but the Bible says when the bread was broken their eyes opened can you pray whilst you are seated Lord open my eyes let this be a journey of transformation let this be a journey of growth please pray Hallelujah. Praise the name of the Lord. So for tonight, just spare me a few minutes and we're done. Listen, week in, week out, when you come, did you know why we pray that God should bring people? We don't pray for people just to celebrate a crowd. It's more than that. It's a passion to reach as many people. There are 3.2 million people, demographically speaking, in this city. If we're unable to reach at least 300,000 people with the truth of God's word to mature them, we're wasting your time and we're wasting God's time. <laughs> yes. You have to believe it. So when you are dragging someone to church, you are not trying to help a ministry grow. You are looking at him and like a doctor. You can scan through his life. While he comes to say, my life, you can see the spiritual gaps. You, you know the laws he's breaking in an instant. And you know if God does not help this man, just agreeing and praying will not solve the problem. Because the truths that this person needs to learn are many. It is on the, that is what sponsors your compassion. When you draw someone to the house of God, you are already excited. Because more than an instant miracle, he now has the opportunity to be immersed in this spiritual truth. So he leaves that service with an enlightened understanding. And he will thank you for it. While the word of God is coming, he can see the gaps in his life. There is a grace given to a man that can open the eyes of men. It's the grace that causes all men to see. So you can see your life in light of this truth. And you can say, wow, I now see why my church is not growing. It's not because I'm not from this city. I now see this may be what I may be doing wrong. And then because you are told to receive with meekness the engrafted word, you are not ashamed of God exposing your area of growth. It's like saying you are better today than you were yesterday. And you receive it with truth. Then you go back like the foxes of Samson. And you will do mighty and terrible things for the kingdom. This is what I seek by the Spirit of God that will happen in our lives. That week in, let me tell you the truth. I give you a guarantee. If you come here week in, week out, and you cannot constructively measure your spiritual growth, I am wasting your time. Please look for something important and do with your life. we together many times we teach that all you need one encounter with the word is all you need that's a very sincere statement but that's incomplete many people have encountered the word for many years it is the truth that is accurately taught that you receive with understanding and you engage appropriately that produces for you not the truth available access to truth does not transform no it must be accurately taught then it must be understood then it must be received by faith the principles contained therein applied diligently then you can commit God's integrity to perform hallelujah let's talk about spiritual growth tonight let's start from there we are we're starting from the very foundation this is a new work and so we'll just start and trust God for grace to build us as far as he can help us. If we're together, say amen. amen. First Corinthians chapter 13 and verse 11. Please let's rush. We have to trust God for grace to be very fast tonight. And then we pray. First Corinthians chapter 13 and verse 11. We're discussing the subject of spiritual growth. Please read with me if you can see it projected inside and outside. Ready? Read. When I was a child, uh -huh, I spake as a child, I understood as a child, I thought as a child. But when I became a man, 
I put away childish things. Please keep that scripture there. Paul is admonishing the church in Corinth, part of his apostolic ministry. And he's talking about the characteristic features that represent childishness in the kingdom. That you know a child, number one, by how you speak. You know a child, number two, by your level of spiritual understanding. Are we together? You know a child by your thought process. Because your life is a reflection of your thoughts. So we can piece this together and accurately gauge the spiritual level of a man. The way that you speak, your degree of comprehension, and the way you think, the way you process spiritual things. When I was a child, he said, this also talks about transition. When I was, once upon a time he was a child. This is a very powerful message because it means men can grow. It's a, it's a revelation. I can come out of my former self into a new version of me. That means the version you saw last week, while you are talking about that one, I have grown. You are talking about the version that cannot heal the sick. You are talking about the version that is ignorant and that we can evolve into superior dimensions of ourselves in this kingdom. Very powerful. So you can see one who is weak. He may even come out for salvation prayer. And you watch that person and you're like, wow. When is this guy going to understand spiritual things? Just give the person the atmosphere of growth. And sometimes as little as weeks. Under a very correct system of growth. You will be surprised what will happen to that person. When I was a child, I spoke like a child. Understood as a child. And I thought as a child. But when I became a man, what happened? I pushed childish things. Childish speaking, childish understanding, childish thinking. If you're with me, say amen. amen. Write this down, please. Growth refers to increase in size, increase in capacity, increase in convictions, increase in resources. Growth refers to increase of all kinds. Increase in size, for instance. Increase in capacity. Increase in convictions. Increase in resources. God expects believers to grow. The Bible is full of um, admonishments for believers to grow. God desires that we grow biologically. God desires that we grow intellectually. God desires that we grow career-wise for career people. God desires that we grow financially like we spoke about earlier on. But for this, for tonight, the subject of focus is spiritual growth. Luke chapter 2 and verse 52. The Bible says, and Jesus grew or he increased. Luke chapter 2 and verse 52. And Jesus increased, the Bible says. Jesus, your Jesus, had to grow. He increased in wisdom in stature and in favor with God and with man. Hallelujah. Write this down, please. Spiritual growth is not determined by how long you have been a Christian. Not necessarily. Luke chapter 11 and verse 52. Spiritual growth is not determined by how long you have been a Christian. Just because you gave your life to Jesus in 1990 or 2000 or 2010, the, the passage of time does not necessarily equate spiritual growth. Listen to this. Jesus is speaking to the scribes. He says, woe to you lawyers, for you have taken the key of knowledge. You've been here for a long time. You have refused to enter yourself and you have stopped others from entering. Most times we pride ourselves just because we have memory of the day that we came out to make an altar call. And you hear people say things like, I have been a Christian for 20 years. Now that's worth, being, uh, that's worth um, our applause. I'm not downplaying it. But I'm saying just because you gave your life to Christ, it's like someone who bought a car in 2000. And just because a car is in his house, he tells you he's a driver. No. The presence of a car does not necessarily mean the ability to drive. Spiritual growth is not determined by how long you have been a Christian. Write this point again. Spiritual growth 
is not necessarily determined by church attendance and observance of religious activities. Spiritual growth is not necessarily determined by church attendance and observance of spiritual activities. Second Timothy chapter 3 and verse 7. That means just because you've been around church for a long time and you've been engaging in spiritual activities, it does not necessarily mean that you are growing spiritually. Paul was teaching his son, Timothy, doctrine. And he said there are a kind of people who are ever learning and never able to come to the knowledge of the truth. Wow, preach, preacher. Wow, wonderful. And just because you've been falling under the anointing for a long time, just because you've been around crusades, you've been around great programs, when they say, who are those who have been in church for a long time, you will stand up. But when we look through your life, we do not see the indices that represent spiritual growth. Is God helping us? There is a tragedy. Please look up. There is a consequence for not contending for spiritual growth. If you are not exposed to the consequences of remaining a child in the spirit, you will not aspire for higher dimensions. Because you see, many times, and depending on what kind of spiritual platform we're exposed to, many times we find ourselves in situations where we are not encouraged to press into God. It's like the most important thing is to give your life to Jesus, like we say. And the moment you have received Jesus, that's all right. After all, whatever it is, it is heaven. There are severe consequences for remaining at that level. Biologically speaking, mothers, when you give birth to a child, you don't flog that child from day one for not walking. You give him some allowance. But after a year, two years, three years, you find out your child cannot walk, your child cannot talk, that becomes a medical issue. Is that true? I have put down here three, three tragedies that would befall any believer who does not contend for spiritual growth. Please walk with me. Let's hurry up. Is God blessing us tonight? Number one, the first tragedy that befalls a believer who does not contend for growth it's in Ephesians chapter 4 and verse 18. Ephesians chapter 4 and verse 18. The Bible says, having their understanding darkened. Look up please. It says, being alienated from the life of God through the ignorance that is in them because of the blindness of their heart. Do you know what this means? That means even though you have received the Zoe life, watch this, you have received the life of God it does not mean it will be manifest in your life automatically. The riches of that which you have received that resides in Christ is released through knowledge. And if you do not contend for spiritual growth, you may never actualize in experience the potentials that are captured in this life. So, two believers, come. This is my great generals, just come close to me. By the way, this is Sam, ladies and gentlemen. For many of you, you've heard me say Sam, and those of you who have been blessed by the song, you reign, Elohim. Here's the person who wrote the song. Thank you. Hallelujah. Now, watch this. Let me have your attention again. Watch this. Now, did you know that these guys can be born again at the same time? Are we together? Filled with the Holy Spirit at the same time. But this man may be subject to a very constructive mentorship system. And five years down the line, you will see the quality of his Christian experience. All wise. You will see that the reality, the riches, the, the, the manifestation of that life that he has so received. When you look at it, you will see the quality of his life. This man, even though truly he's given his life to Christ, you do not see evidences that demonstrate the reality of the victory of Christ in his life. The difference is not the love of God. The same Lord is rich unto all. The difference is that one has submitted to a system that makes for growth, whereas the other one has been stunted or wallowing around in religion. Decree and declare in the name of Jesus. Say after me in the name of Jesus. I obtain grace to grow spiritually. So, 
the potential the potential that this life of God that we have this divine life is released as we grow if you do not grow it will only remain in theory that you are a partaker of this divine life but nothing in your life will show forth the excellency of that victory that is in Christ are we together tragedy number two what happens to a believer who refuses to contend for growth Galatians chapter 4 and verse 1 Galatians chapter 4 and verse 1 now I say that an heir an heir means a partaker of a throne a, a, a benefactor of an inheritance but for as long as he is a child he is no different from a servant some version says slave even though potentially he was designed to be Lord of all look up please the Bible says if you do not grow your experience as one who is in the kingdom and one who is outside the kingdom will be no different does it make sense to you why believers receive the same result as unbelievers it is because just receiving the life of Christ and not contending for growth your results will not change the dynamics that make your life to release the victory that is in Christ experientially is only released at the instance of growth oh, oh, oh. Oh. Tragedy number three. What is the third tragedy for refusing to contend for spiritual growth? Is found in Hebrews chapter 5 from verse 11. Please give it to us. Hebrews chapter 5 from verse 11. Watch this now. Paul again is teaching. He said, of whom we have many things to say and hard to be uttered, seeing that you are dull of hearing. We're reading to verse 14, verse 12 now. It says, for when for the time ye ought to be teachers, ye have need that one teach you again, which be the first principles of the oracles or the doctrines of God, and are become such as have need of milk and not strong meat. 13. For everyone that useth milk, everyone that is a child, is what? Unskillful. Look up. Let me explain what this means to you. When you watch a consultant, when he looks at a patient, while the patient is talking, all of a sudden, the, the myriads of medical truths that he knows, everything is working in an instant. He looks at this and says, oh, I remember. There... We have one in a million of these cases however i think i know what to do about it on the strength of his mastery a student doctor can look at that and crack his brain and the information there is limited so he can do his best although he's a doctor in the making he can even be a fresh graduate and not be able to do much this is what it means to be unskillful so if you do not grow spiritually you can't be a blessing because when people speak to you, you don't know what law they are violating and how to help them. So you begin to come up with sympathetic statements like one day go better. And the Bible says you are unskillful. You are not like one who is moving with uncanny mastery. When you grow spiritually, if a family calls you as a man of God, we are in trouble. What is the trouble? All doors are closed uh -huh, immediately. The scriptures that will bail them out comes to you. You can almost tell them, I know what is wrong. I know what is wrong. It's powerful to know how to help people. Not just how to sympathize with people. You are a blessing to the degree to which you can help. Someone comes to you now and says, I hear that you are a member of this great ministry. Nothing is working in my life. Delays. There is there's no restoration. The moment you hear restoration, you know all through scripture, everywhere there were losses is the prophetic that brought it back. So restoration is exclusively the ministry of the prophetic. 
So you don't just tell that person, let's pray. God help him. That's a careless prayer. You seek to introduce him to a true prophetic voice. They are taken for a prey and none say yet, restore. This is what it means to be skillful. Someone comes to you and says, I am gifted. I'm a graduate, but doors are not opening up. I have a business. And you know exactly what is there. Because you see, James 2.26 says, a body without a spirit is dead. The business is a body. Where is the spirit that gives it life? So you know what to introduce. Are you getting blessed? If you refuse to grow spiritually, you become unskillful. You cannot help yourself and you cannot help people. This is the tragedy with the poor. It's responsible for what outcome. Mastery in the spirit is to be able to connect spiritual laws and their desired outcomes. So when you see people and they cry, you know what spiritual law to help them with. Like a doctor, when a patient says, I'm running temperature and um, I've not been able to eat, I even threw up. You are not a doctor, but help me guess what you think is wrong. Who taught you? That although you are not a doctor, notice you did not say run his stomach. But don't you know that cholera he also vomits? Why didn't you say cholera? Because there are certain things you have been taught through experience that when a patient behaves like this, this is how to help the person. This can happen to you spiritually. Listen to me. I'm teaching you this so after the grace, some of you will run home and say, come, I found what the problem is. I know exactly why this family is not rising. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. With accuracy, you can know. When mama comes to say, are you seeing this? I went to bed and I had a dream. I saw someone speaking to me and he said in this family for the last hundred years, nobody has risen. And everyone is putting their hand on their head and you now join them. What is the excellency of your spiritual investment? But the issue is not just saying, let's pray, don't mind the devil. You say that thing, you will die like a chicken. Because many people have arrogantly made bold claims. Don't stand before Pharaoh until you see the burning bush. If you have not seen the burning bush, leave Pharaoh alone. Your encounter with the burning bush is what supplies the strength and stamina. You can stand before Pharaoh and say, Thus say yet not me, the one I met. Let my people go. Because Pharaoh is stubborn. God does not hide the fact that Pharaoh is stubborn. He will say, oh, God spoke, go. Mm -mm. He will say, who is that? You have to show him a token of your encounter that I really met him. So you don't talk like people who are not born again. When believers are lamenting, what is wrong? You go to scripture. What are the truths? The assignment of men of God is to expose you to the various doctrinal bodies of truth that equip you so that you are equipped with sufficient spiritual arsenals on the strength of that you can now go if you are in your office and someone beats his chest and say except i am not this you will not rise you don't need to start talking as if you are not born ah, mm, and leave him in peace that man you see you should even be pitying him while he's speaking based on what you know if you actually engage what you know you know that it will cause more destruction for that man. So you will search which one can manage the situation and leave the man as a witness. Listen, sit down. Please don't be excited for nothing. Look at me. This is how dominion is produced. Dominion is not just an impartation. It's the resultant effect of your comprehending the mysteries of the kingdom you surround yourself with the principles of the kingdom like chariots they make you a wonder to behold so when you say you are matured in the spirit 
it's not just by physical stature it's not by the huskiness of the voice it's on the strength of the spiritual arsenals you have so pieced together you have fine-tuned them they are like weapons of war you shoot them with the accuracy of the benjamites one sling and goliath goes down low 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 like a mighty wind spirit of victory Cover us with your wings. Go, go, go like a mighty wind. Spirit of victory, cover us with your wings. Please sit down. Is God helping us? Yes. So, all of the dimensions that we seek to walk in in the kingdom. They have a body of spiritual truth that is responsible for their lifting. You are a blessing only when you move with these truths. They follow you. Listen, the Bible said these signs shall follow them that believe. Do you know what that means? When I see what is following you, it's a report card to what you believe. So when I see favor and open doors following you, they are not following you. They are following what you believe. If you want to drive them, don't ask them to go. Change what you believe. They will leave. There are many things we do not want in our lives. You don't drive them by saying, leave me. They are, were designed to honor that belief. If you take it out of your life, they will leave you with it. Hallelujah. Let's wrap up tonight. Indices to measure spiritual growth. Let me give you four spiritual indices that help the believer to measure spiritual growth. Pray in the spirit in one minute. If you are seated. Four indices that help the believer to measure spiritual growth. Thank you, Jesus. Ah. From the pages of my heart, let my worship begin that never ends. Someone's life is changing, my goodness. From the pages of my heart, let my worship begin that never ends. To the God of all flesh, you're my God. let me have your attention we're about to measure to what degree we have grown in the spirit and with it challenge ourselves let me give you an advice never be ashamed when the Word of God comes sustain the ability to tremble at his word without any sense of shame when minister Frecker was here he said we should lift our hands like children that is the attitude he said let the little children come to me he says, do not forbid them for, for such. The kingdom of God requires childlike approach. I come to you with my heart open. And he vets you in light of his truth. Then you repent. Repentance is not a word for sinners. It's the name given to the process that realigns you back to God's patterns. It's called repentance. Number one, the first index that measures your spiritual growth in this kingdom, write it please, is your degree of conformity to the image and the character of Jesus in experience. Of Jesus experientially or in experience. Colossians chapter 1, chapter 3 from verse 1 to 15. Oh dear, let's see if we can hurry up 
and just walk on these scriptures. Colossians 1 verse 3. It says, if ye then be risen with Christ, seek those things which are above, where Christ seated on the right hand of God. Keep reading. Verse 2. It says, set your affections. He's showing you a litmus test for your spiritual life. Set your affection. Something about your affection reveals your level of growth. Set your affection on things above. He never said don't have the things of the earth. But set your affection. When your obsession becomes on money, on titles, on I must make it, I must achieve it. It is good to aspire to be great. But if that's what controls your heart, you are far from growth. Set your affection, let's hurry up, on things above, not on things of the earth. Verse 3. For ye are dead and your life is hid with Christ in God. Verse 4, very quickly, I'll run through it. It says, when Christ who is our life shall appear, then ye sh shall ye also appear with him in glory. Uh-huh. Now, mortify therefore your members. That means you have a responsibility. Mortify your members which are upon the earth. Fornication, uncleanliness, inordinate affection, evil. What's that word? and covetousness which is idolatry verse verse 6 it says for which things sake the wrath of god cometh upon the children of disobedience seven in the which ye also walk in some time when ye lived in them eight but now put off all these believers are we together maybe you should read the rest from here one anger number two number three number four number five nigerians repeat number five dear wonderful citizens of this great country reveal try number five again number verse nine do i say this one now <laughs> Don't worry, we are together. God is helping us. We are growing in the name of Jesus Christ. It says, lie not to one another, seeing that ye have put off the old man with his deeds. Verse 10. And have put on a new man. Hallelujah. That new man is renewed in knowledge after the image of him that created him. Verse 11. We are reading to 15. Where there is neither Yoruba, nor Hausa, nor South South, nor Northerner, nor Middle Beltan, it says, but Christ is all and in all. Let me tell you this. You really know you are transformed when it is difficult for people to connect you with a physical territory. It shouldn't be so obvious that someone sees you and says, you are behaving like them. Where are you from? Then it helps you to accurately get where you are coming from. It is proof that you are not transformed. You should be so transformed, we, we, should be, we should be at a loss to connect you to a physical territory. That when you tell people where you are coming from, they say it's not true. How come you are so refined? You tell them the process is called growth. Growth. Called out of every tribe and tongue and nation into a reality that is beyond the limitations of territory. Let's finish up the scripture. Put on therefore as the elect of God, holy and beloved, uh -huh, bowels of mercy, uh -huh, kindness, humbleness of mind, meekness, long-suffering, 13, forbearing one another and forgiving one another. It says, if any man have a quarrel against any, even as Christ forgave you, so also do ye, 14. It says, above all these things, put on love. Charity there is love. He calls it the bond of maturity, the zenith of your maturity. We're coming there. 15, the last verse. It says, and let the peace of God garrison your heart to the which also ye are called in one body. And in all that you do, do not forget to be thankful. So ingratitude is proof that you are a child. Are we blessed? Write this scripture. We may not read it. Second Peter chapter 1 from verse 5 to 7. It tells us we can add to our faith. 
certain spiritual qualities he says add to your faith virtue virtue means moral excellence add to virtue knowledge since they projected it let's just read on verse 6 add to knowledge self-control or temperance add to self-control patience add to patience godliness seven add to godliness brotherly kindness and to brotherly kindness love this love thing again is God helping us the Bible says in Galatians chapter 5 popular scripture and verse 22 the fruit of the Spirit while I was studying for this meeting if we can have it um, if we can have it give us the passion translation is that possible the passion translation very powerful the passion translation if, if we can't get that, that that's all right the Passion Translation, it puts it in a very, very exceptional and interesting way. That's all right. You can, you can just give us the version we have if the Passion Translation is not there. But it's, it's really very powerful. I just thought that if we look at it, um, okay, yeah, let's just go back to King James. Apologize for that. But the fruit of the Spirit is love. The Passion Translation says, the, the, it says, the fruit which the Holy Spirit walks out through a recreated human spirit is love expressed in its various forms. Then it now begins to say joy, peace. Very, very powerful. Are we together? But let's work with what we have. The Bible says the fruit of the Spirit that means the fruit that the Holy Spirit produces in a recreated human spirit is love. And um, in its, the original translation is not just love, joy, peace. It's just love. One word, love. But that that love expresses itself in joy. Are we together? Peace. So joy is a subset of love. Peace is a subset of love. Long-suffering or patience, gentleness, goodness, faith. 23 meekness temperance it says against such there is no law there is no prohibition to walking in this your degree of conformity to the image and the character of Christ when people look at you they should remember Jesus not you the more they see you you should be the clearest representation of Jesus that they can see not by preaching something about the dexterity of the formation of Christ in you should make people desire Jesus are we together it is my prayer all the time that Christ be formed in me the formation of Christ it is my prayer that I will not just be a man of God who is preaching but that at least my life becomes a worthy representation that you can look at your life and say, my God, this man truly is a reflection of Jesus. It's a noble comment. It's more than saying you're a successful man. You are beautiful in all your ways. That's what happens when you become like him. You are beautiful in all your ways. Character. We must trust God by the grace of God to be men and women of solid character. If your preaching is the only thing that reveals you as a Christian, you are not a solid Christian. If your seed is the only thing that shows you are a Christian, if your praying in tongues is the only thing that shows you are a Christian, something is wrong. Look at those who follow Jesus. Even when they tried to deny him, they had been so transformed. They looked at them and said, no, no, no. You are lying that you don't know him, but th there is something. Can you be that transformed that no matter how you pretend, someone will say, Kai, it looks like you are a pastor you say well I, i'm just i'm just they say no 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 no, no. men shall call you ministers of our god
that in your office the moment they want to bribe as soon as you enter they stop you don't say anything you don't judge blessings to everybody this is the day the lord has made your presence becomes such an inconvenience to darkness character it all belongs to you oh, oh, oh. it all belongs to you my heart my life and everything that i have it all belongs to you let's hurry up we're wrapping up number two the second biblical index to measure your spiritual growth is your depth of comprehension of the principles and the mysteries of the kingdom index number two your depth of comprehension your depth of knowledge, your depth of understanding of the principles and the mysteries of the kingdom. The degree to which you have an understanding of the principles that govern this kingdom is the degree to which you are matured spiritually. Look up please. The Bible says in Matthew 25 when you read from verse 14, the parable of the talents. I'll just pick one or two things there. Give us verse 14, please. Matthew 25. It says, For the kingdom of heaven is as a man traveling into a far country, who called his own servants, watch this, and delivered unto them his goods. Verse 15. It says he gave unto one, how many talents? Help me, five talents. Number two to the other, two talents. And then the third one. It says, Unto every man according to his several ability. He did not give them according to his love for them meaning that he had watched them for a while and the end of the story shows he was correct because the man with five was the most responsible the one the man with five had a lot to fight he had pride to fight being the one with the highest talent he overcame pride and was still focused and diligent the man with two had jealousy to fight because knowing there was somebody above him he conquered jealousy and still produced that. The man with one, you bury seeds, not talents. And he buried the, the talent and came. You can see that he was already offended. When they asked for him, he says, you are a hard man. You like reaping where you didn't sow. And so I thought to even pity you, I buried it. Here is your talent. And he said, you are a wicked, number one. Number two, unprofitable servant. Hallelujah. God gives unto men according to their ability that has come from their growth. Ephesians chapter 3 verse 20. It says, now unto him who is able to do exceeding abundantly above all we ask or think. Here's the scripture. Not according to his power, according to the power that works in us. The dam brings water, but the, the amount of water that ends up in your bucket is according to the size of the tap, not according to the potential of the dam. You can turn your tap just once and it will be a drop and it will take you almost a day to have a bucket full. Is that true? And someone can turn the tap very fast and within a minute the bucket is full. The problem is not the dam. The dam has the potential to fill as many buckets according to the power that works in us, the capacity. The day I found this, I found out that the limitation in the dispensing of the grace of God is not just God's problem. There is something about my capacity that needs to be built so that I can host superior dimensions of his presence and it became my pursuit to enlarge Luke chapter 19 from verse 41 and 42. Jesus lamented two reasons why Jesus cried in the Bible. Number one was at jo Lazarus' tomb when he wept because of his compassion. Second was this over Jerusalem. Three reasons I meant to say. See the third, well, he, the Bible says he cried, he was sweat, well, it was like drops of blood. 
it says when he was come near he beheld the city and wept over it why did he weep 42 saying if thou hast known even thou at least in this thy day the things which belong unto your peace it says but now they are hid from your eyes jesus wept over jerusalem and said jerusalem jerusalem that's the original translation if you had known even in this your time the things that pertain to your peace peace there means your wholeness but now they are hid from your eyes we must contend for spiritual truth listen to me we must contend for dimensions of truth that equip us and help us to be matured to manifest the fullness of the life and the power of god number three the third biblical index that measures spiritual growth write it down is the outworkings of the power of god in and through your life we know that you are matured to the degree to which we can see the tangible manifestation of the power and the ability of the spirit in your life the outworkings of the ability of the spirit of god in your life please write this down i think i confused two scriptures let me give you a scripture that had to do with depth of comprehension first corinthians 4 and verse 20 it says be not children in understanding i'm seeing two scriptures i omitted here be not children in understanding first corinthians 14 20 be not children in understanding write it down please then write down colossians 1 verse 9 the bible says paul was praying over the church in Colossae. that's over point two now that you might be filled with the knowledge of his will wisdom and spiritual understanding hallelujah the outworkings of his power in your life second timothy chapter 2 and verse 20 the bible says but in a great house look at me please it is not the vessels that make the house great it is the builder even though there are all kinds of vessels it's still called a great house but in a great house please keep the scripture there it says there are not only vessels of gold and of silver but also of wood and of clay he said some vessels are destined unto honor some vessels are unto dishonor what is the condition verse 2 if a man will purge himself from this prune yourself from this you shall be a vessel unto honor sanctified and meet for the master's use and prepared unto every good work let me tell you this by the grace of god I know a bit about the power of God. I know a bit about the anointing of the Holy Spirit. I have seen the power and the grace of God. I understand a bit about the dynamics of the anointing. I can tell you this. The vessel is a very important subject as far as impartation and the administration of spiritual power is concerned. The vessel can make the oil look small. In 2 Kings chapter 4, the woman who was owing her husband died. The Bible says the prophet came and said, what do you have in your house? She said, nothing. That little jar that could feed her was listening to the conversation too. Because the anointing is a living thing. So the anointing was hearing and saying, you are calling me small. And the prophet said, you don't know. The problem is not the oil. The problem is the kind of vessel holding it. Go and borrow vessels. Expand. He said, borrow not a few. When she borrowed, it now said to pour the oil. The oil began to multiply to assume the shape of the vessel. The anointing will only be as effective as the maturity of the vessel administering it. The outworkings of the power of God. There has to come a time in your life, whether you are in ministry or not, active ministry like we know. You cannot remain with God, growing spiritually, truly, and then get to a point where the outworkings of the power of God is not visible in your life. It's impossible. Someday, you should be able to speak over someone and, his, and doors change. Someday, you should be able to come into your family. Help him, please. There has to be the reality. Listen to me, please. If you're a man of God here, let me tell you, 
is not all about power manifestation, but there has to be a, an investment of the spirit upon your life. There must be a signature of the spirit. Maturity. Then your word become like the words of God. That lady wearing black, I'm seeing an angel pouring oil on your head. Yes, that lady looking at me. I stretch my hands right now. Something is happening to you. Help her, please. I'm seeing oil being poured on her. This is what happens. This is the place of encounter. One testimony that was shared here was produced by the power of the Holy Spirit. Your Bible says his divine power. It says according as his divine power hath given us. The giver is his divine power. If you stand and watch doors like that, you will watch it forever. You will need to obtain power from on high. Samson remained helpless provided there was no power. But when grace came upon his life, you see so when you come to church like this don't see this strange is it not written in your bible that well peter yet speak these things it says the holy ghost fell on them that had him so you go back home with an experience and like the psalmist you can say i was glad when they said to me let us go how could your life remain the same my brothers and my sisters, it's impossible. Not the God of the Bible. The power of the Holy Ghost. I believe in power. I've had the opportunity in ministry to see what power can do to lives. Political careers. It takes power to enthrone kings. It's not just prophecy. When you speak, there must be grace that backs it. I am a man under authority, the centurion said. And I can tell one, go, and he goeth. The power is, and he goeth. Not that I said go. I said go, and he goeth. Come, and he cometh. So you say, open. 
and it opens close and it closes listen may grace come on your life this night that many of you will return back home and in the name of Jesus you will stand I'm speaking by the spirit help them please I decree and declare you will go back home like the foxes of Samson carrying supernatural power power to dislodge the workings of darkness in the name of help that woman please in the mighty name of Jesus Christ please sit down we're wrapping up can I speak to you everything that has refused to work by this time next week I stand by the spirit and the grace of God in the name of Jesus I command it to begin to walk I speak by the Spirit of God help help that woman please every response you should receive you heard their testimonies I stand by the road of a higher priesthood every frustration over over your destiny I release you from it now please sit down we're wrapping up this is koinonia number four the fourth and the last index for measuring your spiritual growth is called your love life we're wrapping up Hali Selema Shola has I'm opening doors opening doors that's what the Spirit of the Lord is saying I'm opening doors you will think I'm joking but you'll be surprised to see what happens I'm opening doors this is what God is saying I said before you he says an open door that no man can shut I'm opening doors this God speaking to someone I don't know who that person is but you came here with hunger I stand by the grace from heaven and I declare those doors those doors be open for the sake of his majesty be open be open in the name of Jesus please sit down help that woman please please sit down we're wrapping up listen to me please next week don't come to church alone don't come to church alone don't leave your loved ones behind no even if they will sit on the roof let them sit there one encounter with the power of God can open ages chapters that have been closed hallelujah we're wrapping up we have about 10 minutes and we're done for tonight please be patient with me listen please the fourth index for measuring your spiritual growth according to scripture is your love life when you read first John chapter 4 this is a very important subject your love life madam that woman come no 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 you please you don't have to stand up at random where are you coming from what's your name I'm hearing a name of Fayemi. What's your name? Fayemi. The Lord is saying I should tell you this week coming. This week you see coming. From Monday tomorrow. You will come and stand here. The way doors will open in your life. It will surprise you. I stretch my hands and I bless you. In the name of Jesus Christ. You drink of this grace and you return back with strange testimonies. In the name of Jesus, God bless you. Let's finish up. First John chapter 7. Chapter 4, please. Chapter 4 from verse 7. Let's hurry up, please. We're wrapping up. It says, Beloved, let us love one another. For love is of God, and everyone that loveth is born of God and knoweth God. Verse 8. It says, he that loveth not, knoweth not God, for God is love. Keep verse 8. But the text is down to 21. It says, whoever does not love, it is proof 
that you don't know God. No matter how you convince yourself, something about your love life. If you love God and hate men, you are not born again. Many people love Jesus only because they can't see him. If they see Jesus for one week, he will join all those they have hated. I love him with all my heart let me tell you this one of the secrets to the grace of God upon my life is not just prayer and fasting alone it is sincere love God has given me that grace and it's been a prayer Lord may I not use people may I not use members to make a name let let them see the passion the love that whilst you are sleeping I'm praying for you and I'm saying Lord lift me open doors for them huh not just coming to collect communion to bless my greatest joy is not my lifting my greatest joy is your rising hallelujah your love life john 13 and verse 35 by this shall all men know that ye are my disciples not when you pray in tongues not when you preach well, not when you share revelations. 13, 35, John. By this shall all men know that you are my disciples if you have love one for another. The first core value, help that lady. The first core value in this ministry is not power, it's love. Love is very powerful. 1 Corinthians chapter 12 and verse 31 very interesting scripture as we seek to wrap up very powerful scripture never forget this for the rest of your life haven't discussed the manifestation the gifts of the spirit as charismatic as they are it says but covet earnestly the best gift and yet i show you after prophecy after word of knowledge after healing i show you a more excellent way 13 verse 1 what is the more excellent way? The way to do it in love. Though I speak with the tongues of men and of angels and have not love, I am become as a sounding brass. Oh dear. I wish we can get the voice or that well for next time. I'm sure that our media will help us with that. I am become a sounding brass or a tinkling cymbal. It says verse 2. Let's go to verse 2 now. It says if I have the gift of prophecy and I understand all mysteries if you become this man people will look for you till they kill you you know all mysteries and prophecy and you have all knowledge you have all faith you can move mountains but you do not have love he says I am nothing look how little we weigh in the spirit without love in the physical they can be clapping Apostle Joshua Selman but in the realm of the spirit you weigh so small verse 3 the Bible says, if I donate all my goods to feed the poor, I give my body to be burned, and I do not have love. It says, I gain nothing. Verse 4. Let's hurry up, please. Love is patient if it is true love. Love is kind if it is true love. Love does not envy. Nigerians, love is not boastful. It is not conceited. Verse 5. It says, does not act improperly. Love is not selfish. Is not easily provoked or easily angered. Does not keep a record of wrongs. Hmm. Verse 6. It says, finds no joy in unrighteousness, but rejoices in the truth. 7. We're almost there. It says, it bears all things, believes all things, hopes all things, endures all things. Verse 8. This is the love you talk about. Love never fails. Now we can go back to KJV so that we can wrap it up. It says verse 9 for we know in part love never fails listen to my message love never fails business people if the Bible tells you there is something that does not fail look for it that means whatever is failing add love to it it will change the equation love never fails but whether there be prophecies they shall fail the most accurate of us is still limited whether there be tongues they shall cease whether there be knowledge it shall vanish away my goodness verse 9 it says for we know in part and we prophesy in part verse 10 
but when that which is perfect is come that which is imperfect shall go away 11 it says when i was a child back to our scripture now let's go to verse 12 we've read that we have to rush it says for now we see through a glass darkly but face to face we know in part then we shall even know as we are known 13 and now there abided faith that moves mountains if you have faith in today's world you are a great mountain mover if you have hope there is no shame for you because hope has a way of eroding shame it says and of these three the greatest is love the greatest is not power the greatest is not signs and wonders the greatest is not prophecy and revelatory gifts the pro the greatest is not accuracy of the exegesis of doctrine those things are wonderful but according to divine rankings the zenith of your transformation is not knowledge is love love it is my desire that more than preaching that I will truly become a lover of God and a lover of men to love men to love men sincerely you are not spiritually growing to the degree to which you pile hate in your heart you have all kinds of black books no no tonight may be a word from the Lord to say look you need to pack up that nonsense you need to be light to fly when you are heavy these weights press you down it says seeing then that we are surrounded by so great a cloud of witnesses let us lay aside every weight right and the sin that doth easily beset us and let us run with perseverance the race that is set before us we're going to pray and ask the lord to grant us grace to desire growth from the depth of your heart god is training us god is building us please rise up on your feet two prayer points tonight very quickly prayer point number one father grant me the grace the grace to grow intentionally lift your voice and begin to pray inside outside lift your voice and pray the grace to grow intentionally i am tired of this level in the spirit i desire to grow from today i make my spiritual growth an intentional pursuit there is a lot that depends on my growth hallelujah praise the lord the last prayer point father grant me the grace to reveal Jesus from today through my life through all of these dimensions are we together now through my character through the dexterity of my spiritual understanding through the outworkings of the power of the Holy Spirit in my life and by the demonstration of love let men see Christ exalted Christ revealed in my life lift your voice and pray those outside pray overflows pray following online lift your voice and pray hallelujah praise the lord i'm about to make the altar call please be patient there are a few very important announcements i need to communicate before we wrap up for tonight but there are people here listening some of you came here you were invited some of you are in the overflows some outside some following online from whatever nation and you're saying apostle hearing you speak i cannot for sure say that jesus is lord of my life i have a desire for him but i don't seem to have truly found him others are saying one time i gave my life to jesus but as it is now my life has gone haywire and i need to bring my life back to order these two categories of people now for all of the overflows and outside you just move to your projector screen and then those in the main auditorium i'd like you to run and come and stand here it'll be my joy and my honor to lead you to jesus i'll count one to five 
please i'd like you to come one let's honor them koinonia come to jesus god bless you win that war tonight win that war tonight win that war god bless you keep coming don't be ashamed of anyone no one condemns you this is a house of love come 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 he's giving you a new beginning come all overflows move to your overflows look at these our wonderful children let's celebrate them come come Minister Freke taught us, and he said, if he's not in his presence, and if it is not by his hand, if it is not by his word, it's not just don't let me have it. You really can't have it. You have decided to follow Jesus. No turning back. No turning back. You have decided to follow Jesus. No turning back. No turning back. When the Titanic sank, there were only two names. If ever you were saved, there was your name. If you were lost, your name was there. There's nothing like being in between. No. If you are not saved, you are not saved. If you are not sure, you are not saved. I salute every single one of you. Listen, until the day Jesus comes, we will never stop participating in the global harvest. We must see to it that souls come to Jesus every day someday when we're in heaven we're going to see these blessed people and they will look at us and say thank god thank god for clapping for me while i came for i am alive that was changed thank you for giving to the lord i am so glad you came my dear ones, look at me. We're standing before Jesus, not just Joshua Selma. Those following online, those in the overflows, let there be someone there to guide them. I want to lead you to make this most noble prayer. It's greater than receiving an award. It's greater than receiving an employment letter. It's greater than rising up from a wheelchair. This is the security of your eternal destiny. Lift your right hand high to the heavens. Pray this from the depth of your heart. Say after me, Lord Jesus. One more time, say, Lord Jesus. I love you. I have heard your word tonight. I believe in you. That you are the son of God. Tonight, I hand over my life to you. And I receive your life in exchange. Be my savior, be my Lord, be my king forever. I declare that I receive the abundance of grace and the gift of righteousness. I reign in life. Amen. Keep your hands lifted. Father, we thank you for these precious ones. They have become by their confession members of the family of heaven. And it's an honor to welcome them to this family that so represents your voice and your counsel at this side of your kingdom. I pray that you will keep them in the name of Jesus. I commend you to the ministry of the word and the ministry of the spirit. May you become mighty men and women of the spirit. And I pray that the Lord himself will do wonders in and through your life. In the name of Jesus Christ. Thank you very much. Now very quickly. There's a counselor. There are counselors waving a placard for you. All of you, I want you to please move in concert. Just follow um, the counselors. Celebrate them as they go.
celebrate them as they go bless you darlings thank you hallelujah praise the lord now please listen just some very important announcements i have to welcome our first timers i sincerely apologize we're done in a moment but you need to hear this it's very important um by the grace of god you've seen what god has done in the ministry it is so overwhelming we're opening up more doors for the workforce the first time we open yes thank you now let me explain to you why many people are clapping because um the first time we open up doors for workforce we had over 4,000 people and we had to cut them down to about 10 percent of them uh almost i think it was it worked almost everybody here the size you know applied for it but now we're applying to specific departments the security and traffic control and then the the um protocol and logistics department we also have ushers we need ushers you see how many people were flying up and down under the anointing we need a lot of ushers to help us now if you are interested by let's say three hours after tonight's service please go to our social media platforms especially our facebook and instagram platform can you project it for them to see please so that you can you can tender your application there three hours after the service it will be up just click and then put in your names. We'll allow only two days for this. That means by the end of Tuesday and Wednesday, the doors will be closed. And um, so you please write your name. Ushers, those who want to be part of the ushering team, those who want to be part of our protocol and logistics department, those who want to be part of the security and traffic control. Praise the name of the Lord. We'll take them gradually. Please make sure you have um, those down and then it will also the, the our global page that you have and you know you can also will make sure that it is there also so that you can click on it and then follow very quickly praise the name of the lord now i want to honor those who are coming here for the first time last week we were all first timers including me but now we're one week old so we're no longer first timers praise the name of the lord this is your first time worshiping with us here please i like you we're all standing but just wave your beautiful hands to jesus my good my goodness my goodness outside wave your hands all the overflows let's celebrate jesus for them thank you um now very quickly please keep your hands lifted every one of you a few officials will be handing to you our visitors card it's in two parts the first part is for your information it is your consumption it contains information about the ministry our activities what we stand for our mandate especially in this city please do well to tear the first half you can go home with it is yours um, is both a, an instrument for your edification and knowledge and also let it go with you as a mantle in the name of Jesus and then the second half will plead that you quickly our time is up but quickly would like you to fill it as um, let it be as clear as you can let it be very legible please fill it very quickly and then you can leave it on your desk there or pass it to an official that will be standing by your side uh, by next week we'll do well to do the welcome of visitors just somewhere in the middle of the service before I come up so that we can give you we'll give you room to be able to complete your forms we apologize for the pressure that is on you now but on behalf of Jesus Christ himself, who is the apostle of the church, and even over this commission, we welcome you. This is Koinonia Abuja, and um, we thank God for what he's doing. This is a family of people who truly love Jesus Christ and are passionate about seeing his kingdom come and replicating the fullness of his life. We're here Sundays, 5 p.m. Do well to join us, and your life will never be the same, even if you have experienced. Don't come alone. Come with as many um so that they can encounter jesus the least we can do for you now is to pray for you so all of us who are one week old we are going to stretch our hands towards every first timer you can find around or if or you can just pray for them if you can't see anyone let's just speak words of blessings while they complete their forms we bless you we bless you we decree and declare that you go from glory to glory 
you are part of a house of power a house of his presence a house of favor a house of wisdom let these virtues of the spirit go with you we bless you with the blessings of heaven we declare and decree that every challenge that came here with you it drops and lets you go in victory you walk in victory you live in victory you speak in victory in the name of Jesus Christ let the name of the Lord be exalted in Jesus name I pray amen and amen now by by next week um, dearly beloved I hope you were blessed by this message do not keep the video to yourself share to as many as you can to help them bless check our home page for more of our messages subscribe to the channel comment on it like it see you on our next video bye pray 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 for your destiny the phase of development. Lord, grant me the discipline.